You can't come out with your person. Oh, The October 18, 2022 meeting of the City Council of the City of Springfield, Illinois is called to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Clerk, could you please call the roll? Will do. Alderman Redpath. Here. Alderman Gregory. Here. Alderman Williams. Here. Alderman Fulgenzi. Here. Alderwoman Purchase. Here. Alderwoman DeCenso. Present. Alderman McMiniman. Here. Alderwoman Connolly. Present. Alderman Donnellan. Here. Alderman Hanauer. Here. Mayor Langfelder. Here. Mr. Mayor, a quorum is present. Thank you. The uh, first item on the zoning agenda is docket number 2022-039 for the property located at 906 South A Street. Petitioner is NYJ Developments, LLC. Present zoning classification is R5B. General residence in Office District Section 155.021. Requested zoning relief, a variance of Sections 155.056. Minimum required lot area per dwelling unit to allow a 10-unit apartment building on a lot containing 6,113 square feet of a lot area instead of the 25,000 square feet required 155.091. Required accessory off street parking spaces for residents due to allow three accessory off street parking spaces instead of the 15 required and 155.112 surfacing to allow the continued use of parking on the existing rock instead of the hard surfaced dust free surfacing required. Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff recommendation is approval as submitted. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is accept the recommendation of the Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff. Chair will entertain a motion. Motion to accept staff recommendation. Second. Been moved and second to accept the Springfield Sangamon County Regional Plan Staff recommendation and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. Whoop. Sorry, missed. And the zoning docket passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is docket number 2022-040 for the property located at 32 Weinold Lane. Petitioner is Martin Sikorsky and Michael Edwards. Present zoning classification R1, single family residence district section 155.016. Requested zoning relief, a variance of section nine regarding docks of appendix A of the land use plan for this Lake Springfield and its marginal properties to allow the current covered boat dock and lift for boat access at approximately 52 feet from the shoreline instead of the maximum 35 feet allowed. Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff recommendation is denial. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is grant the petition as submitted. Chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that we accept the Planning and Zoning Commission's recommendation. Second. Been moved and second to accept the Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation and second any discussion. All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. And the zoning request passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is docket number 2022-0041. For the property located at 2477 West Washington Street, petitioner is St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church, present zoning classification is R1, single family residence district section 
Request the zoning relief of variance of section 155.311B. Residence office district sign regulations, non-illuminated nameplates and identification signs to allow the three ground signs along West Washington Street, including a new illuminated monument style ground sign of 164 square feet and two existing entrance signs of 12.75 square feet each instead of the one non-illuminated sign with an area not to exceed 24 square feet allowed per code, the existing V-shaped sign will be replaced by the new monument sign. Section 155.311C, Residence Office District Sign Regulations, Non-Illuminated Nameplates and Sign Identification to allow an electronic message sign of 50 square feet and within the proposed illuminated monument sign instead of the 16 square feet bulletin board, which may include an electronic message board for community facility uses allowed per code to vary section 155.315B, residential and office district sign comp conformance to allow said proposed monument sign to be allowed with no setback. Previously, docket 1985-0, one one granted relief to the existing v-shaped ground sign allowing a four inch setback from the front property line which is to be removed and to allow the two existing entrance signs to be allowed with no setback previously docket 2007-029 granted relief to the allow the sign on the south property line eastern entrance to be 24 inches front uh, front of the front property line contingent upon receiving an easement from the city council to allow the sign to be on public property instead of the 10 feet required setback per code. Petitioner desires to have the west entrance sign also have no setback. In addition, both the existing entrance signs extend several feet into the right of way and a license agreement with the city will be sought to allow the entrances signs to remain and a variance of section 155.315C residential and office district sign conformance to allow the three signs, the two existing entrance signs, one at the West Drive and one on the East Drive as shown on Exhibit A and one new illuminated monument sign as proposed and shown on Exhibit B instead of the one sign permitted per code in the R1 zoning district. Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff recommendation is approval as submitted. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is accept the recommendation of the Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff. Chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to accept the Planning and Zoning Commission's recommendation. Second. Been moved and seconded to accept the Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation and seconded. Any discussion? Uh, yes. All, all the women Conley. Thank, thank you, Mayor. And I would just like to um, uh, re recognize the Public Works and our arborist. Um, have already responded to some concerns from a constituent across the street from this um, where they had lost some trees and have asked for replacement trees and they've agreed to do that for next spring. So um, I certainly appreciate Public Works um, helping out in that way. Great. Any other discussion? All in favor of the motion vote yes. Those opposed vote no. The voting is now open. And the zoning request passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is docket number 2022-042 for the property located at 1800 and 1804 East Spruce. Petitioners Barbara, Luke, and Gregory Robinson. <coughs> Present zoning classification is R2, single family and duplex residence district section 155.017. Requested zoning relief of variance of section 155.157, discontinuance of use to occupy the second dwelling unit located on the property once again to allow the use of the property as two single family residents on one lot for, of record. Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff recommendation is approval. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is accept the recommendation of the Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff. Chair will entertain a motion. Motion to approve staff recommendation. Second. second. Been moved and second to accept the staff recommendation and seconded any discussion. All those in favor of the motion vote yes. Those opposed vote no. The voting is now open. And the zoning request passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is docket number 2022-043 for the property located at 4030, 4100, 4130, 4200, and 4230 Westgate Drive. Petitioner is Centennial Park Subdivision, LLC. 
present zoning classification is S2, Community Shopping and Office District, Section 155.031. Requested zone relief reclassification to R2, Single Family and Duplex Residence District, Section 155.017. Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff recommendation is approval. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is accept the recommendation of the Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff. Chair will entertain a motion. Uh, Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we accept the Springfield Sangamon County uh, Regional Planning and Zoning uh, recommendations. Second. Been moved and seconded to accept the Springfield Sangamon County Regional uh, Commission's recommendation and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. And the zoning request passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is docket number 2022-044 for the property located at 1816 and 1818 Hazel Dell Road. Petitioner is Nicholas Weiss. Present zoning classification is R2 single family and duplex residence district section 155.017. <clears throat> Requested zoning relief a variance of section 155.010A and A1. General provisions to allow storage of two personally owned trailers at the property while not residing at the property. 155.112 surfacing to allow the parking pad driveway addition of recycled asphalt instead of the solid dust free surface required by code 155.062 C1 and 2 permitted obstructions in a front yard to allow driveway and parking spaces on a driveway not leading to a garage or off-street parking located beyond the required front yard and 155.114 regulations for location of off-street parking facilities to allow parking in a required front yard. Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff recommendation is approval as submitted. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is accept the recommendation of the Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff. Chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that we accept the Planning and Zoning Commission's recommendation for approval. Second. Been moved and second to accept the Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff recommendation and second any discussion. All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. And the uh, zoning request passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is docket number 2022-045 for the property located at northwest corner of Sangamon Avenue and Illinois Route 54, PIN 15-18.0-326-019. Petitioner is Don <coughs> Curtis, LLC. Present zoning classification is B1, Highway Business Service District, Section 155.033. Requested zoning relief reclassification of I1, Light Industrial Service, Section 155.040. Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff recommendation is approval. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is accept the recommendation of the Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Ch Staff. Chair will entertain a motion. Make a motion to accept the petition as submitted. Second. Been moved and second to accept the petition as submitted and approved by the Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff and second any discussion. All those in favor of the motion vote yes. Those opposed vote no. The voting is now open. And the zoning request passed 10 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is docket number 2022-046 for the property located at 1124 North 19th Street. Petitioner is Jody and Stanley Porter. Present zoning classification is R2, single family and duplex residence district, section 155.017. Requested zoning relief, a variance of sections 155.062C1 and 2. Permitted obstructions in a front yard, allowing as permitted obstruction, parking in front yard setback, and on a driveway not leading to a garage or off street parking located beyond the required front yard, and 155.114B. Regulations for location of off-street parking facilities to extend the driveway to the north 11 feet in width and 25 feet in length to run parallel to the existing driveway allowing parking in the front yard setback. Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff recommendation is approval as submitted. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is accept the recommendation of the Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff. Chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I request that we approve and accept as recommended. Second the motion. Second. It's been uh, moved and second to accept the uh, petition as submitted and approved by the Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff and seconded. Any discussion? 
All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and the zoning request passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is docket number 2022-047 for the property located at 401, 421, 501, 515, and 601 Stanford Avenue. Petitioner is TC Investment 4, LLC. Present zone of classification is I-1, Light Industrial District, Section 155.040. Request its own relief, a variance of Section 155.0321A, non-illuminated signs in Section 155.322, illuminated signs to allow one front yard illuminated ground sign of approximately 378 square feet and one illuminated ground sign on the side yard adjoining Stanford Avenue of no more than 200 square feet, which would result in I- total square footage of 578 versus the maximum of 156.92 square feet allowed by section 155.322 and 155.321A for the zoning lot and the maximum 300 square feet allowed for the I-1 district and a single front yard aluminum sign of 378 square feet instead of the maximum 300 square feet allowed by section 155.321 in areas zoned I-1. Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff recommendation is denial is submitted. In the alternative, staff recommends approval of a variance of section 155.321A non-illuminated signs and section 155.322 illuminated signs to allow all ground signs not to exceed 300 square feet total. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is accept the recommendation of the Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff. Chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move to accept the Planning and Zoning Commission's recommendation. Second. Been moved and second to accept the Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning and uh, Zoning Staff recommendation. And second, and discussion. I yes. just. If you'd like to identify yourself, please. Sure. Tom Pavlik for the petitioner. <clears throat> um, I think what we'd like to ask for is 300 square feet on the monument sign, which would be an LED illuminated sign, and 200 square feet for a ground sign for a total of 500 square feet. The problem here is that the perceived front yard is Stanford Avenue, which is, I think, in excess of 800 feet. The legal front yard of the property is Passfield, which is a stub of probably less than 100 feet. As a result, with that small front yard that limit is, limits the total signage that Mr. Green can put in this property where he's going to be building a new car lot, which is why I would ask, it originally asked for 378 square feet on the tall LED sign and 200 square feet for a smaller ground sign that is not LED. I've talked to Mr. Green, and I've talked to his sign consultant, and he is okay with 300 on the LED, the one that goes on the monument pole, but we're asking for 200 for the ground sign, which would be a total of 500 square feet of signage. That's what I thought this was. Okay, that's what I just wanted to clarify. Thank you, Alderwoman. That, would, that is what this is? Yes. Okay. Yeah, is that, uh, Matt, if you want to clarify, is that correct? Yeah, that, that is correct. Okay. I was right. <laughs> Very good. Hey, hey. Just want to make sure everybody's on the same page. No surprises. <laughs> so uh, it's been moved and seconded, as stated in the, uh, by planning and zoning staff recommendation, and as stated as the attorney for the uh, submitted petitioner. Thank you, Mayor. Any other discussion? All in favor say or vote yes. Those opposed vote no. The voting is now open. Give a second. I wouldn't steer you wrong. <laughs> oh, I thought I did. I pressed the button. And the petition passes nine voting yes, none voting no, and one voting present. Thank you all. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is docket number 2022-048 for the property located at 3335 South Veterans Parkway. Petitioner is Club Car Wash Operating LLC. Present zoning classification is S2 Community Shopping and Office District 155.031. Requested zoning relief reclassification to B1 Highway Business Surface District Section 155.033. 
Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff recommendation is approval. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is accept the recommendation of the Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff. Chair will entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion we take we accept the Springfield Sangamon Regional Planning Commission recommendations. Second. Sure. Been moved and second to accept the Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation and second any discussion. All those in favor of the motion vote yes. Those opposed vote no. The voting is now open. And the zoning request passes 10 voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is docket number 2022-049 for the property located at 2451 Denver Drive. Petitioner is CHJSST2 LLC and Maribus of Springfield LLC. Present zoning classification is B1 Highway Business Surface District Section 155.033. Amended requested zoning relief, a conditional permitted use pursuant to sections 155.033C14. Conditional permitted uses in the B1 Business Highway District, Adult Use Cannabis Dispensing Organization, section 155.211.7, Adult Use Cannabis Dispensing Organization, and section 155.492, conditional permitted use, subject to the property being purchased by the petitioner. Amended Springfield Sangamon County Regional Planning Staff recommendation is recommended approval of the amended petition to allow a conditional permitted use in the B1 district for an adult use cannabis dispensary, provided the adult use cannabis dispensary is limited to the existing building footprint. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is approved the amended staff recommendation based on amended petition and its linear feet. Chair will entertain a motion. I make a motion to accept it as uh, submitted, I guess. Second. Been moved and second to accept the petition as submitted. And second, any discussion? Have you heard briefly, here? Go ahead. I, I would just ask that the motion be amended in one slight regard. Out of planning and zoning and staff recommendation, it came up that the facility should be limited to the existing uh, footprint. To comply with state and local laws, the petitioner has to build a sally port, a secured sally port, to allow deliveries and product to go out. Um, I would ask the motion be modified so that it be the conditional permitted use be granted for the existing footprint and for the sally port to be constructed as was indicated in the petition. Okay. So it's been moved to uh, accept okay. the petition as submitted with the addition of the Sally Port as submitted. Thank you. And second it, any discussion? Yeah, Mayor. Alderman Hanauer. This meets all the setback requirements that we have in place. We don't, there's nothing that needs to be changed there, right? Correct. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. And the uh, zoning yes. petition yes. passes as amended. Nine voting yes and one voting no. Thank you all. And again, I just want to say how wonderful your staff is. You do have to be commended. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is docket number 2022-050 for the property located at 700 East Adams Street. Petitioner is 700 East Adams Street owner LLC and Tower Capital Group LP. Present zoning classification is S3, Central Shopping District, Section 155.032. Requested zoning relief a variance of Section 155.049. Special provisions for residential uses in the inner city to allow 125 extended stay suite hotel rooms and up to 275 residential dwelling units consisting of studio and one and two bedroom units as further detailed in Exhibit B. Springfield Sangamon County Planning Regional Planning Staff recommendation is denial. Planning and Zoning Commission recommendation is accept the petition and accept the standards of variation as submitted by the petitioner. Chair will entertain a motion. Mayor, <coughs> Mayor, I move to have discussion. Okay. Second. Then move and second for discussion. <coughs> and uh, are there questions of the council, or do you want to? I was going to. I asked Scott Dahl to do a presentation first and then um, that'd probably be followed up by David Mitchell. Okay. Good 
Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate that. I thought I would just review some of the information that I've reviewed at some of the previous uh, council meetings, and we'll run through this pretty quick. A lot of it hasn't changed um, through the last couple months here, so uh, we'll run through this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, citywide occupancy ADR rev par. Uh, just as a review, obviously occupancy, hotel occupancy, we have almost 4,000 rooms in the city. That's the number of hotel rooms that are rented citywide. Um, ADR average daily rate, that's the average daily rate that we run in the city. And RevPAR is a combination of the two, occupancy, ADR. That's really your truest measure um, when you're looking at the occupancy and ADR because, you know, oftentimes you, the hoteliers would rather rent um, uh, 50 rooms at $100 and 100, 100 rooms at $50. So that's really what it's telling you at that point. If you look uh, to your far right there, you'll see that the city uh, this year through August is running 53.4%. Um, it's running a record 96.12 average daily rate. That's an all-time record. And it's running a rev par. Again, that's the truest measure of 5132. That's pre-pandemic levels. Matter of fact, the September numbers landed in my box just before this meeting, and we had pushed up to 54% occupancy uh, and a little bit higher on ADR. So we're much closer to where we were pre-pandemic. Just to show you, share you some numbers with the with the Wyndham and what they've been going through uh, for the past years. This this came from the uh, Wyndham ownership group. Um, you can see here that the Wyndham Springfield at the top. Um, if you see year to date, you can see 30. Point, 9%, well below what the city uh, is doing as a whole. They're running 12 months, 27.5%. Their competitive set, I'm not for sure exactly who's in their competitive set, uh, but it's running 45.7%. I assume it would be convention hotels. I would not assume it would be uh, limited service, state house in, et cetera. Uh, so um, again, a little bit lower than the, uh, the citywide average. <clears throat> Uh, the convention impact on this zoning decision, again, this I've reviewed this in the past, this has not changed. If zoning is denied, resulting in zero hotel rooms uh, for the city, we'll have 26 conventions uh, that are obligated from 2023 to 2025, representing almost 57,000 room nights that will be impacted. I added the 65 total dates because majority of these 26 conventions are multi-year conventions. Typically, when we sign a convention and we spend years prospecting a convention, uh, we sign them for multiple years. We just don't sign them for one year, uh, unless it's more like an event like the American Truck Historical Society that we had at the fairgrounds this year. Uh, but these, these are they're true conventions. So uh, that's if it's denied, we have zero rooms there. Uh, Zoning is approved for 125 rooms. We'll have 17 uh, conventions, again, from 2023 to 2025. That will be still be impacted. Approved for 150 rooms, 12 conventions will be impacted. And then if you go to 200 rooms, uh, we'll have four impacted by that. Again, these numbers really haven't changed. I'll go back um, briefly here to, um, is there one more, should be one more slide in there. Oh, here it is. Zipped over. Uh, our contingency actions, um, of course, uh, de depending on this decision, we're going to work with meeting planners, hotel partners, transportation companies. Uh, either way this goes, we're going to have uh, an impact and we're going to have to have some contingencies in place. Uh, if, you, if it moves through uh, the redevelopment as uh, has been proposed at 125 rooms, uh, then we'll still have some gaps. There'll be gaps to fill, uh, absolutely. Uh, within those 17 conventions that are still impacted. Uh, an example would be uh, if, for example, the Wyndham, uh, if I'm looking at a couple of these, the, um, we'll just take the uh, IFA group, for example. They have, uh, the IFA is a Wyndham only uh, convention. Um, and that, so they solely are using the Wyndham at that point. Uh, they've got over 200 rooms that have been committed, obligated uh, for the Wyndham. 
at 125 rooms, obviously they're going to be 100 rooms short. So you're going to have to move those rooms or walk those rooms. If anyone's ever been to a hotel and you show up, your room's not there, that's a walk. They put you in another hotel, another facility, uh, they pay for your room uh, because they oversold. That's essentially what we're looking at here. We got these additional 100 rooms. We don't know where they're going. Uh, it's easy to say they could go across the street, more than likely across the street's going to be full based on the occupancy uh, that that convention hotel has been running. So um, fortunately, uh, the State House then has offered 75 rooms based on availability. So we can, uh, that could be an option, but again, we need to talk to meeting planners. Uh, meeting planners may, may not go along with that. I've got one behind me with the American Legion, Mike Walton, and uh, you know, there's reasons why these groups book downtown, uh, the convenience, uh, the location, uh, uh, et cetera. So, uh, again, that would be, have to be applicable to the meeting planners, uh, but it's certainly nice to have the State House offer the 75 guest rooms, and that could be an option, uh, again, if it's agreeable to the meeting planners. Um, SCVB will estimate the cost to reclo relocate the rooms. Again, there will be gaps uh, in there. And, of course, we'll have to reline our marketing and sales efforts to reflect the change in our downtown hotel room supply. Uh, we'll be looking at a completely different convention market uh, as a result of a redevelopment uh, and or either way really uh, with the rooms the fewer rooms in there because again right now we have two large convention hotels and uh, go down to one at this point and we'll have to realign our marketing and sales efforts uh, moving forward so that's our contingency there um, any questions any questions General Mayor Alderman Hanar have we gotten any, uh, if this goes forward, have we gotten um, any, um, uh, are we going to, Are that is the current new owner gonna, going to uh, follow through with our contracts that we have in place for conventions? Have you gotten any indication from him whether he's going to, going to abide by our contracts or they all that up in the air? I That's would leave a, that to the ownership group uh, to answer that question, Alderman. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Alderman Donlin. Yeah, th <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. Mr. Dahl, would, uh, to build upon Alderman Hanauer's question, I just want to, because I've heard all kinds of different scenarios, and if this zoning proposal were to go through uh, as presented this evening, and it does impact conventions. Is the city, does the city have any liability, uh, or the Convention Visitors Bureau have any liability uh, towards any contracts that have been signed uh, based on this action? And maybe that's a question for legal. I don't know, but I'm just going to ask. I, yeah, I don't know if you want to answer that, or should we go to executive session? <laughs> I'll leave that up to Corporation Council on that. Um, just, just very briefly, I think uh, Director Dahl and I actually had talked about that a little bit. And what we have to recall is on, and again, this is an answer purely in a legal context, not a policy PR context, but the contracts are not with the city. They're between the hotel and I think the convention center, I believe. The It'd city, be the hotels and the convention center. Yeah. Give the or city take, has no that. contracts whatsoever, so there is no pure legal liability related to any of these matters because we have no contracts uh, relating to these. So we, per contract, would have no direct financial involvement? Correct. That's and my the, question. The, the other, the, the policy issue, though, to be, uh, what was discussed was there may be a policy or PR, public relations issue, of how to deal with uh, customers who feel that they're not satisfied. I understand. But there is not a legal liability to the city. This is that answers my question. Thank you. Alderman Redpath. Corporation Council, if you could further explain that if we're the cause of the contracts being terminated, um, won't we have some liability? No. Alderwoman Center. Thank you, Mayor. Is the plan to still close the entire building for renovation for a year? That would be a question for the new developer or the redevelopment group, for sure. Is the plan still to close the hotel for a year? Any other questions for Scott? No, sir. Then we'll have him come up and answer that and give his presentation. Alderwoman Purchase? No, but I think my question will be directed towards David. Okay. 
Thank you, Mr. Dahl. Uh, Alderman McMinimum. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you for the information, uh, Director Dahl. You've got a, a chart here that shows the various impacts based on what might happen. And it looks like the worst impact would be if there are zero hotel rooms available. Alderman McMenamin, can you speak in your mic? Thank you for... Yeah, it's on. should be on. It's my way just pull closer or lean in. Thank you for all the information, uh, Director Dahl. So as I understand the various scenarios that you've mapped out here, the worst case scenario would be if there are zero hotel rooms available. And then all the um, conventions are impacted. Is that the way I'm correctly reading the, the impact chart? Sort of. Okay. As I've previously mentioned, that if the hotel closes due to the owner closing the hotel, that is uh, unforeseen by the city, that means it's not our fault, then force majeure would kick in. And uh, I understand we don't have a contractual liability, but we certainly have farmed these conventions. We have certainly spent years prospecting them, bringing them to town, telling them they would have their rooms. And again, even though it's not on paper contractually, uh, if the hotel owner decided that they weren't going to honor the contracts, I'm assuming that the meeting planners who are typically very savvy would come to the city and ask them or ask the city to cover the rooms. Um, and if we were, we didn't cover the rooms at that point, uh, certainly our reputation would be at stake. Certainly we would have a PR issue. Um, but at that point, uh, we would be protected simply because uh, it wasn't our fault. Yeah, um, I'm trying to, thank you for that. I'm trying to look at it from the um, conventioner's point of view that the, the most disruption to those that come to our city for a convention will be if the, there are zero hotel rooms available in the Wyndham. That, that's the most disruptive outcome based on your chart because then all the conventions are impacted to a very sig significant, uh, in a very significant way. Correct, we would have to relocate those 26 conventioners um, around the city, absolutely. They may even decide not to come to the city uh, but and that's a possibility. That's why you know I put in there with our contingency that we have to speak with the meeting planners because each one's going to be different. Uh, the American Legion is going to be different uh, than the VFW. I mean, depending on what you know, how long they've uh, contracted for and and what effort gone into it. I mean, the Illinois Reading Council it took us eight years to attract them back from Peoria, uh, and they've got three more years on their contract. Uh, very very large. They got over 700 peak room nights on their. Um, they're likely not staying. Thank you very much. Yep. Uh, one quick question, and I'll, uh, then I'll go to Alderman Williams. With regards to the Wyndham, have you received complaints? Because uh, just this past week, I heard from a group that said, you know, they had outside visitors come in. And they said uh, they wouldn't recommend anybody <coughs> staying there. Do you have any? Have you gotten calls or CVB with regards to conditions of the hotel itself? We haven't received calls at the CVB. However, we have heard from some conventions that are concerned absolutely with the condition of the Wyndham. Uh, if you read TripAdvisor, <laughs> they do not do well on TripAdvisor. Um, and obviously that's public information. So yeah, there's, there's some issues there. Uh, it needs some capital. It needed capital in 2019 uh, when the current, current owners purchased it out of bankruptcy as well. So this isn't new. Um, certainly we've gone through a two year pandemic and uh, it still needs some, uh, some capital input, absolutely. Um, but that is a, certainly a concern, um, but I think when it gets right down to it, uh, service is always number one. Uh, you can have a stain, but it better be a clean stain. You better be well maintained, and you better have good service. Uh, you don't have to be the newest product to be out there. So yeah, it is a concern, Mayor. Alderman Williams. And so following up on um, uh, Alderman McMenamin, you prefer to have 125 rooms versus zero, correct? Doing your business and the impacts that we're talking about. 125 is better than zero. I mean, see, yes or no? It's not that easy, Alderman, uh, simply because uh, our longstanding and very solid reputation is on the line. And with zero rooms, if the hotel closes, it's not our fault. I, I keep saying that it's not our fault. We, we cannot 
help a hotel owner closing the doors. However, we vote through a redevelopment agreement. That is the city's fault, and our reputation is on the line. So I, it's really a tough question to ask because when there's no fault, we have more sympathy from our meeting planners because we didn't have anything to do with that. A hotel owner just decided to close his door, made a bad investment, and everyone moves forward. However, when we decide to vote through not having the rooms, uh, there will be less sympathy for sure with our meeting planners. And again, there may not be contractual liability there. Certainly though, they'll look at us to make good uh, for pushing through a redevelopment that took away uh, their rooms. So, oh. so it's a really a tough question for me. So if it goes to zero and, and it's not our fault, surely if it goes to 125, it, it would not be our fault. No, because you passed the development agreement. So you, you took away their rooms at that point. Oh, well, so I feel like now our, our, our arms are being tied. You know, it's like you, you're saying either or. And, 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 and we've got a guy wanting to invest to fix some of what we're hearing about the conditions of the hotel, because I've been hearing the bad things too. So he comes in, pumps all this money in, and we don't have as many rooms as we, we have right now. That's still better than going to zero. I said that way back when we were at 80 and zero. And now we're at 125. And see, so is the problem really the decrease in the hotel or the fact that your business doesn't want apartments? Is, is that what, what the problem is with you guys, that it's about the apartments, not really about the hotel rooms? Well, Alderman, I'm not the policymaker, so that's really your decision. You choose the lesser of two evils. No, but I'm asking you your opinion as director of tourism. Does it bother you that apartments may be a part of this new mix? It bothers me that we've entered out obligations to 57,000 room nights, and we don't have anyone standing up to say they're going to honor them. That's what bothers me. Thank you. 125 is still bigger than zero. That's what right. I'll say to you and the other woman. She, she was initially for this. Well, it's not over yet. Yeah, I was about to say, what are you saying right now? Well, you said thank you and then put it yourself, so I wanted you to know. Uh -huh. I guess where for this uh, discussion, if you could, if everybody could direct their comments to the chair, I'd appreciate that would be helpful. It, unless you're asking the question directly to the person at the podium. So I, I would just say this: when I'm trying to to make a, the best decision for Springfield, it would be helpful if you were a little more clear on if this is hurting you or helping you, and you keep saying. We got liability, we don't have liability. We should do what we're doing. And, and, and that common sense tells me that 125 rooms won't hurt you near as bad as zero rooms. But I can't get you to say that because for whatever reason. That, that, that's a problem because you should be able to advise us from the business that you're in a little better than what you're doing right now. Well, no, what I'm saying is that with the 125 rooms, it's less impact to the conventions but it's more impact to our reputation. And again, we go back to this. Nobody is stepping up to honor the agreements that are in place. If we had the current owner or the, uh, new, the developer say, we will honor every contract, everyone we will come through and honor it, certainly that would put us in a much better position. Thank you. That's, that's what I'm trying to get to. Okay. Yep. I guess just one follow up. Is it better to try to save some of the contract or just let them all go because that's essentially what we're saying is you'd let them all go rather than have put forward the effort to save some of the conventions I mean then again if if it goes down to zero and we can relocate them uh, we don't know maybe new hotel hotel development comes in maybe we reposition those conventions uh, in 24 as well I mean I'm really looking at 23 where we have 22 of these coming in in 2023 so you know 24 obviously concerns me uh, but again it's I think we have less liability uh, when we it's not our fault and when we put it back on the onus of the hotel owner and I think that we'll have our meeting planners also be more sympathetic to us at that point so again it's a tough call um, and, you know, I, again, that's why the policymakers are sitting in front of me, uh, and I'm just trying to provide you the information. Alderman Gregory. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My, my uh, 
first thoughts would just be, you know, that the the building definitely needs some work. You know, well, I was in uh, a few con conventions and stuff, and 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 have her had some of the same reports on on the condition of some of those rooms and stuff. So when we speak on reputation, I think our reputation would deteriorate if some money doesn't get put in in it. Regardless, you know, whether it goes to zero or whether people keep coming to the Wyndham that is really not in uh, the shape that we would like it to be in the city. Um, so it's really going to come down to, you know, us, um, I think, you know, Mr. John, I have a, a, a amendment or something soon, but it's going to come down to 50 rooms or 40 million. That's, that's what this is going to come down to. And, and, you know, whether or not he shuts it down and somebody else buys it or another hotel comes, comes, uh, around in the next year, I think Roy got one, um, coming up in his road, uh, pretty soon, but that's what it's really going to come down to in the end is, 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 you know, do we want to do the investment? I think people are coming to this city will appreciate the investment that we supported into that hotel. Um, and, and, you know, 50 rooms that shouldn't break us. That's my opinion. I thank you. All the one with purchase. Thank you. Director Scott, have you had any meetings with any of these planners so far? Because I'm pretty sure they're concerned knowing that this is coming back for the third time. So has anybody reached out to you? What is the concerns that you're hearing? Well, we haven't met with any of the planners. We certainly don't want to set off alarms, right? I mean, certainly the ones that see this in the media mm -hmm. uh, have uh, inquired about it. Uh, we have a group here right now in the city uh, that is already acquiring about it. Obviously, they're hearing about it. They're in the city. Uh, it's kind of the talk this week. So, you know, they've got three more years, uh, but they're already talking about going uh, to, another, to another city. Yes. And, and that came what? in this week uh, through our services department that there's always already that chatter uh, okay. that's going through the hotels. And then my follow-up question is how many multi-conventions? You said there was conventions that we do over and over. Yeah. How many of those do we have currently? Do you know? Yeah, um, so the, the multi-year conventions of, of the 26, uh, that's written down. Um, give me just a minute, I have it written down. I think it's 15, all the women. Yeah, I think it's 15. Let me, let me grab this real quick. Yeah, 15. 15 are uh, multi-year. So that means that uh, at least two years, most are three years. So extending out 23 to 25 okay. every okay. year. And would it be... I guess coming from a PR perspective, would it be your job to reach out to them if something goes wrong, or would it be the convention center's job to reach out to them? Well, well, again, they have contracts with the hotels for either rooms or meeting or banquet space. So on those terms, it would be to the hotel or to the BOS center if they have space that, that has been reserved. But okay. again, I go back to, you know, we prospected these. And so whatever happens, whether the redevelopment goes through, uh, and we see what's going to happen, and, and we will then start reaching out to these planners to let them know uh, that, you know, we're going to have to have other options. Um, or but when you say we, is that you, Director Dahl, that you have to reach out? My or? services department, yeah, okay. services department uh, will reach out, uh, and the sales team will reach out. Because, again, they made the initial contacts. They make the, the follow-through. Uh, I'm sure I will be on a lot of those calls. I mean, I can't see getting away with that, and I would want to be present there as well. Um, every single one, maybe not, but the majority of those, especially the larger ones uh, that we know uh, are going to have real issues uh, staying in town, absolutely uh, will be on the forefront of that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah it's safe to say you'll be, uh, you'll be on all those calls along with the uh, space that's being impacted. You know, with, whether it's the Bank of Springfield Center or a hotel, you'll, you should be on all those calls so it shows a collective front trying to resolve a situation. Yeah, absolutely. Alderwoman Conley. Thank you, Director. Um, I know these conventions are varying sizes. You were talking about some of them are larger and some of them are smaller. Um, should we have zero rooms if the, if the owner of the Wyndham were to not make any rooms available um, for conventions? How many of those conventions are, how many would have significant issues with finding rooms and how many, I mean, are we going to lose all of these conventions if we have zero rooms? Or are there, with different sizes, some of them will still be able to be accommodated? I think we can accommodate majority of them. But again, it's up to the meeting planner. Right? It's just, we don't know. We've made promises to them. Uh, and so we're, we don't know how they're going to react. Um, so some are going to probably look, look at it differently. Because again, we, uh, we prospected them and brought them typically from other cities. 
And so we brought them here telling them what we were going to do mm -hmm. uh, and what we were going to have for them. And now things have changed. Uh, so I, I really don't know what the, uh, the actual impact <laughs> is going to be. I, if I look down through the list, though, to answer your question, yeah, I mean, some of these, FBLA, uh, they have 356 peak room nights. So could they use 225 at the Doubletree and make up 100 elsewhere around the city? Possibly, yeah, if, if they're up for it, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, I certainly, again, get back to the point that majority of the book downtown, they have the option of booking anywhere in town. They have the option of booking uh, on the, near the interstate at the Crown Plaza if they want. Majority book downtown because of the convenience, the walkability, um, the, the retail that's downtown, the historic sites that are walkable downtown for their attendees as well. So, you know, when we're looking at taking, let's say for this example, 100 rooms and moving them around town, uh, we're going to have to provide some kind of shuttle service. I can't expect them to jump in their cars and drive downtown to their, their meeting space. So, again, how agreeable will the meeting planners be? I, I don't know. We'll have to we'll cross that bridge when, when we get there. Um, and, and ask them at that point, and then we'll know the true impact of that. But certainly, uh, if we knew that we had contracts being honored, it would go over much, much better, uh, for sure, when we're uh, having those conversations uh, with the planners. Alderman Pulgenzi? Yes. Um, if we amended that from 125 hotel rooms to 150, and then you had 75 from State House Inn, and you only had 50 of those, that would be the 200 rooms. Uh, actually, it would be 225 if they had them all available. Uh, not, that's not counting any peripheral hotels, like, for example, on the bypass or out north, out south. Uh, would that be acceptable? Again, I, I can't answer for the meeting planners. Like they book downtown for a reason. And it, certainly, I'm not discounting the 75 rooms at the State House, for sure. I mean, we've had groups that have used the State House. Uh, it's a, few, a couple blocks away. It doesn't seem that far. But again, they like that uh, availability of having the two large convention hotels right downtown across the street from each other. So yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. There's options out there. We're, we're going to explore all the options. But we don't know how the planners are going to react. Because again, they've entered into agreements that said that the rooms will be available at a location uh, that they've uh, agreed upon. And at some point, some have told their members, some may have not, some have told their attendees, some have not been announced, what have you. So there's just a lot of variables there. And it'll really be up to the planners to how comfortable they feel about booking around town. So in, in any convention, what you're saying is they all stay downtown. Well, not all of them. I mean, Crown Plaza certainly has their fair share, right? I mean, they have 50,000 square feet of, of meeting space. Uh, they've got rooms to handle uh, mid-sized conventions. Uh, but when you're talking some of the larger conventions like uh, the, the Reading Council uh, that we brought over from Peoria, I mean, that's How a very... rooms uh, do, you, do you promise to those conventions? Well, they've got 765 on a peak night. 765. And how many do we have downtown? Well, I, when typically the double tree can, will give about 225. And again, depending on the date and the time of year, they may give a little bit more, but not much, because they need to save back for transient, corporate, uh, some other group. They're higher rate rooms. So typically 225 uh, will be there. Uh, the Wyndham uh, would give uh, 275 and up. Uh, for their rooms, depending on if they could get all the rooms or not. And again, depending on the dates and, you know, how comfortable they feel about giving the rooms. So, yeah, I mean, we could stretch into the 600 mark uh, if we needed to uh, currently. Now, obviously, we'd, it's going to be different moving forward. Okay. Sounds like we can, we can accommodate them if it was gone to 150 rooms down at the, uh, uh, what is it, 4 and 30 or Wyndham. So, okay, thank you. Alderman McMinima? Well, going along with what Alderman Fulgendi just said, if we, if we can save 150 rooms at the Wyndham and then we have 75 rooms over at the State House Inn, a few blocks away, looks like we, we ended up with almost zero impact to the conventions. And I think we all want to save the hotel rooms to limit impact to the conventions. Um, but if we fail to 
provide any zoning relief here. Uh, the current owner has said he'll close the hotel. I mean, that's what he, he came here in person and said that, that if we, if we fail to give zoning relief and we block this sale, uh, he will close the hotel. And so I think we gotta aim for some compromise here to, to do what's best and, and not one extreme or the other extreme. I think that's what we're all trying to achieve. And let's remember now that the existing hotel owner, according to the most recent information we have from our city water, light and power, owes $1.5 million to our utility right now. 1.5, is that correct, Mr. Mayor? Correct. Um, so um, under this proposed zoning relief, um, we pay that down to zero. There'll be no debt. And, uh, but if, if we don't pass this zoning relief, and we've got $1.5 million of debt owing to the city, it seems like we're obligated to pull the plug on that hotel as a city. If, if we don't um, give some zoning relief here, uh, we can't let that debt continue to grow. So it seems to me failing to give zoning relief means that um, we're going to close that hotel. We, we just can't let that debt continue to, to accumulate. When we went into executive session about a year ago, the premise behind letting that debt go on was because we thought we had a, uh, um, a pending sale of the hotel to a new owner that had the resources to make things better. And um, I, I hope we get to that point tonight because um, that's the better outcome for the city, for, for downtown, for our shops, for the restaurants, for everybody. Especially let, me, for the let me make it clear, Alderman, that you know the Bureau will deal with the cards that are dealt. We will. Uh, we proved that coming through a 100-year pandemic. Uh, our, certainly our team is strong. So really, it's up to this body. It's not up to us. I'm just here to provide you the information. Alderman Donla. Thank, uh, thank you, Mayor. Mr. Dahl, I just, it seems like we've been spinning around circles so many times and throwing out so many numbers on this issue over the months. Uh, I just wanted to kind of reflect upon so the, ex uh, what the existing zoning that is permitted for the hotel allows up to how many, how many hotel or how many apartments? My understanding, 200 apartments. So the existing zoning can, is, and there's 400 rooms, right? So it'd be 200, 200. 369 guest rooms and 20 some apartments. Yes. Okay. And obviously we know what the, re the, the original zoning request though was for zero hotel rooms. And I, I guess that's, that's not really a question for you, but that's, that's that was my understanding. Yeah. And then it went through several, it was never formalized but, and, and uh, adopted, obviously. But anyway, uh, the original proposal was for zero hotel rooms. And, and now the proposal is for 125 hotel rooms. And you, you or somebody said something tonight that uh, sparked, uh, sparked this question. Um, I know with a flagship hotel, when you have a brand, such as the Wyndham or the Hilton or what have you, that certain number of rooms need to be set aside for, I'll say, regular use or Hilton rewards members or right. so forth. So if you had, as an example, 125 rooms, what what is that percentage or what is that number that needs to be set aside for non-convention use? 30%. Well, 30%. Yeah. So, so help me out with the math here. 80, 80, okay. 80 yeah, 90 thanks. rooms would be what you're probably going to expect. You're not going to have all 125. Just like if you go to 150, again, again, you're probably going to be... I mean, nobody could argue that that's not better than zero, yeah. but I get that part, but it's not truly 125. So what I struggle with this whole, with this whole proposal initially is if the present zoning allows for 200 and they were to do 200 apartments, 200 hotel, they obviously wouldn't need to be here. And anyway, uh, that, that, that's been a struggle of mine because I recall last time we talked about this that if, if we were to have a magic number that, of rooms that would be needed f from the Wyndham property, that number was 200. And is that, am I correct in remembering? That's the number we initially started with, 200, correct. Thank you. Of course, that's what it's zoned for now, but we were in meetings where they said the uh, convention space uh, to occupy that is really 150 rooms. We sat up in the mayor's conference room and we had the discussion on Zoom and that's what was uh, communicated then, was 150 rooms for that amount of uh, convention space. You could get by with 150 rooms, but it's really not. You don't see too many uh, hotels with 40,000 square feet of meeting space and 150 rooms. I mean, it's, typically you're going to have a couple hundred rooms. But that's certainly a number that, you know, if you're trying to work towards and get towards, uh, could 
work to some degree, but yeah, absolutely. Would you say the Wyndham in the sheer size of it is an anomaly to Springfield? Is that a typical hotel you see in Springfield? Or size of this, this city? S city this size, would you see well, that size of a hotel? I think the actual typically? structure is an anomaly. I don't think the size of the <laughs> property is an anomaly. Mm -hmm. uh, right. If we look at the, the Marriott and Bloomington uh, Normal, for example, Mm -hmm. um, that's a large property. I'm not sure exactly how many rooms, but some 300 rooms and some 30 or 40,000 square feet of space. So I wouldn't say that it's actually an anomaly. Embassy Suites in Peoria comes to mind as well. The Pier Marquettes uh, that they renovated in downtown uh, and then added a courtyard attached to the Pier Marquette. So I wouldn't necessarily say it's an anomaly for a uh, uh, city our size, but it's certainly the structure is. Yeah, and that's what we're getting at is the, uh, well, we'll have David come up. He can tell what the cost of the uh, remodel would take and answer all the women DeCenso's uh, question with regards to shutting things down, things of that nature, and Alderman Hanauer's and whoever else would uh, like to ask questions. I got a question. I, real quick, the reason I ask that, the current owner says that when he tried to get financing, uh, it's viewed as a big box store, you know, just like a, uh, you know, the Walmarts or you know just look at the mall all the big box stores are gone and so he said it's hard to find financing and then when we talk to uh, hoteliers they they say well you know you can get financing for 150 rooms uh, and that range is the sweet spot because if you're going to build a hotel today that seems to be the size of a hotel that's being built but that was according to who we've talked to Any other questions for oh, Alderman Williams? You know, just real quick. So in, in your line of work, you, we, we promise these people that they're going to be in two hotels across from each other and the proximity of, I, I mean, I get that, but it, I mean, is it hard to get conventions without that? I mean, I go to conventions, I check into my hotel, and I take my Uber to the convention center and do whatever I'm doing there, and then I go back to... And, and that's more common than this, this concept that we do here in Springfield. So what I'm, it's not impossible for you to start promising these conventions that they won't be in this, you know, where they're going to hang out with Mary Tide and Abe, I guess. If, if we can get them to understand that it ain't guaranteed that the walking, as you call it, you know, would that hurt us? because they have to get in an Uber and come. So we're acting like it's, uh, it's strange uh, not to be able to walk across the street to the convention center when in reality it's the opposite when, in, in, in your business for, for what I do and where I go and the conventions I've been at. Very few of them have been where you can just walk and be, unless it was like the crown. You know, you just go downstairs and they so big that the convention's down that, right downstairs. Other than that, it's always about Ubers and shuttles and taxis and, and, and all that kind of a thing. So I guess I'm asking you, can we maybe stop doing that promise? Would that make us fall off on, on, on conventions if we, we didn't offer that? We already do. They have that option. They choose to come downtown. They already have that option. We can oh, put them across the, in every quadrant of the city, and they can stay wherever they want, and they can Uber in, and they choose downtown. And you're... I think you're referring to metro areas, Chicago, New York. Yeah, bigger areas, of course. Yeah, exactly. Sure. That's exactly yeah. not who we're going after. That's a tier one city. Uh, we go after tier two, tier three. Uh, they're not looking for that. They're looking for the opposite. And they already have that option. So they have the option of staying at the Crown Plaza, coming downtown if they want. They can Uber. They can shuttle. They, can, they already have that option. They choose to be downtown. So it's already there for them if they want that. Well, thank you. Yep. Alderman Hanauer. Yeah, thank you. I, I, and I'm not in your business, but I would think that with, with the competition that we have to do with Plume, just like Bloomington and Peoria, we have to be able to say they can walk downtown. They're, they're, they're close proximity. Yeah, we can, we can say, yeah, you can, you know, when you're in Chicago, you got to do that. But that's, that's just a negative that we're going to compete against. The way I see this is they might come one year, they're gone. We're going to lose the convention industry. We're going to, it'll be very small conventions, and, and uh, I think that a convention goer spends more money per day 
in area than someone that lives in that area. More money per day because they got to eat, they drink, you know, they, they do their <coughs> shopping, whatever. And so what we're doing, and, you know, we're, we're trying to build up downtown. Well, if we lose 60,000 foot traffic, that's going to kill downtown. It's going to kill it. Absolutely kill it. I mean, let's be honest here. And, um, yeah, I would love to see, I, I, you know, we've already been told that it's down for a year. So it doesn't matter. First, the next year or whenever, we're going to have zero uh, rooms in that hotel. I mean, that, that came from back before. And, you know, just think about this. It's going to kill downtown. I don't care what anybody thinks. It's going to kill the businesses downtown because people that live downtown aren't going to run and do the things that a conventioneer does every day. So that, that's my opinion, and I, I appreciate the work you do. I feel bad that we're putting you in a bad situation. Well, we're not putting you, but certain people have put you in a bad situation uh, because of this, the, the sale and everything. And, um, you know, the, the fact of the matter is the hotel would have a lot more business if, if they would have put more money into the rooms, but they didn't, and, and that hurt us too. So, And I'll just add quick, Peoria is our major concern. They are set up very much like us with 110,000 square feet of convention space, larger than what we have here all together, column free space. And they've got that walkability. They've got they've invested in that Pier Marquette, the crown or the uh, courtyard, uh, that four points is reopened. So they went through some struggles as well, and they're certainly a, a major competitor and very very good comparable for us uh, when we take a look at that. Alderman Redpath. Uh, uh, sorry, Mayor. I, wasn't I think Conley's before me. Oh, okay. Sorry, Alderman Conley. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I'm actually going to kind of just reiterate a little bit of what Alderman Hanauer said. I've taken some time to talk to some downtown businesses, and they certainly have emphasized how much of that renewed business comes to them with, with convention visitors. Um, and when, when people come in who, you know, you get some free time and you go do some shopping, you see some of the unique sites that we have. Uh, I, I have some very real concerns about, about how, well, how this will impact downtown. And again, Director, you touched on it. Peoria went through a lot of pains, um, but the Pear Marquette, when they took the time and, and a responsible hotel owner renovated that in a way that it is, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely stunning. Um, and it's right by the convention center. Um, and there's, you know, there's all that parking and yeah, I would want to go and stay in something like that. And these smaller conventions that we're looking at, so we're not competing with Chicago. When we compete with a Peoria and the investment they've made in their downtown, I, I think we're putting ourselves at a disadvantage. So, um, and again, I, I appreciate this. This is not an easy decision. I would echo my um, colleagues' concerns that a building that had deferred maintenance when it was purchased, shouldn't we shouldn't be surprised that you let deferred maintenance go and things start falling apart. And I don't think that we should be punished because someone else skipped doing what they should have done when they bought the building. Thank you. Alderman Redpath. Mayor, I was just going to ask if we could either close this line of discussions because we got lots of people that want to talk tonight and we sure. would like to hear from the developer sure. if we can do that now please if you come forward uh, the one last thing i know scott and i talked about this pier marquette when they were going through that renovation that was the time that we could have uh, pilfered some of their business right convention business yeah and i think we did i mean when we uh made it a point of one of our core values to be a convention city when i came on board in august of 2018 uh, the sales team took it to heart and you know i we half joke about it that they're part of the problem here they did too good of a job right uh they sold conventions over that first year through 2019 uh like you hadn't seen a bureau do before and so they did an outstanding job but yeah absolutely we had an opportunity there to to, to take some of those away and I so think that was the same time frame al rajabi bought the window and so just so we everybody's on the same page he's even said He's a bottom feeder. This hotel was in distress. And I'm sure the developer is going to come in just like Scott had done. Occupancy throughout the city is 53%. At the Wyndham, it's 27% or 30%. We can argue all that. We can argue about the maintenance. 
but it didn't cash flow. But what Mr. Rajabi did, he thought, just like any business person, it's all risk reward. And so with that, the pandemic hits and um, he's told that, hey, we need hotel space to quarantine people. Nobody knew what the pandemic would have or what would impact it to have. But thank God we have uh, the class uh, one medical area that we have and he didn't receive the benefit that he thought or was told by public health. And so those arrangements were made. Instead of shutting down like others did, he remained open. And so people have asked me about the utility bill. The utility bill, per the governor's orders, we didn't shut anybody off. So that happened for over a year. And so that accumulated. And he continued to bleed the cost of running a hotel with staff and nobody came. And so that's what we're facing. We're, and we'd have the developer come up. He can speak to the cost. So if we have, if we have you know, more David Mitchells lining up, which I don't believe we do, but if we do, great. But if we don't, you think the decision to shoot down this is going to be harmful or, or accept this proposal, which he's going to provide? The catastrophic approach is if that hotel shuts down, and we all know that. So we can dance around the zero percent or zero occupancy. We can dance around that whole issue, but that's the reality. And it's tough for all of us. How many, I'll ask the audience to participate. How many of you want the Wyndham or the Hilton or the Form 30 back in operation full steam? Yeah, everybody would. How many would you want, how many of you would want zero hotel rooms down there? I'm sure everybody's hand would go up. If those were the two options, everybody's going to be in the majority. So what we're trying to do is figure out what the best option is. So unless someone has a crystal ball, uh, it's going to be a very difficult decision for all of us. But that's, that's why Scott Dahl's up here. He, he gets paid for this. That's why you don't get paid as much as probably you should, as I'm sure you feel. Absolutely. But uh, with this type of discussion, it's helpful. Right. So we can make the best informed decision based on the information we have at hand without that crystal ball. So with that, I'd ask David Mitchell to come up, if you would, please, and Thanks, Scott. go over your presentation. Thanks, Director, Thanks, Director Dahl. Uh, good evening. It's a pleasure to see you. Third time's a charm, and I look forward to uh, addressing you tonight. In the previous um, meetings that we've had, we spoke about a vision for downtown. We spoke of, about a vision for uh, the Wyndham and its redevelopment. Today, I would really like to speak about the economic impact um, and really what we can see from this redevelopment. At the behest of the city, um, the city asked that we commission an independent third party to do an economic study of what this redevelopment would mean for Springfield and specifically for downtown Springfield. Um, but before I hand out the economic study, which I think you all have had, uh, at least since early this morning, I'd like to just talk about where we've come from. We came from when we first met, I believe in July, with a request for 400 residential units. Um, but then we met, I think, in September, um, and where we, where we are today is, a, um, is an amendment um, that was passed by your planning and zoning for 75 additional residential units, of which 27 of those residential units really exist today. So that would mean an additional 48 residential units in a building that's 390,000 square feet. So we would, and, the, and the residential units that we're talking about are on average 365 square feet. So what we're talking about is an additional 17,520 uh, 17, square feet, again, in a building that's 390,000 square feet. And I know it's not about the square feet. I know it's not about the additional units. I know it's a lot about the economic impact that this would have in downtown. Um, Alderman Hanauer spoke specifically about you know, the economic impact of potentially 
losing, if you will, the convention business. I don't believe you're going to lose the convention business. But the, so, I, so part of this study that was done by a prize, which is a Chicago-based firm that just does oh, the, sole, the, the sole purpose of a prize and, and, and what they do is they do economic studies for municipalities. And they spent, I don't know, three, four weeks, and before that, two months apprising uh, Springfield and specifically the downtown and weighing, you know, what does a convention attendee spend and what does a residential attendee spend and, and, and annualize that over a period of time. So I, I would like to really um, spend some time really talking about the economics effects and why I want to join you in really rising Springfield up. I want to be your partner in doing that. Before I go through the economic study, I've asked our, our architect, who you know well, Joe Petty, to really talk about what these units will look like, both the hotel units as well as the residential units, and also about this world-class observation deck that we intend on putting on the top of, of the building. I'll go into much more detail about the economics of the observation deck and its meaningfulness to Springfield, but I've asked Joe to put together some renderings and to really describe what you will see inside the, inside the building. So after that, I will uh, uh, have some time, hopefully, to go through the economic report. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Joe Petty. I'm a uh, principal with the J.H. Petty & Associates. My address is 3220 Executive Park Drive. Full disclosure, when I got to the office this morning, looked at my planner, I had two things scheduled tonight on the planner. I had this, and I had my 25th wedding anniversary. Oh, boy. So it was kind oh, of a tough one. You guys won out. I think we got tough decisions. You guys won out. But strike that from the minutes. I don't want my wife to know that. Um, well, she knows. Oh, yeah, she does. Yeah, she does. Um, before I dive into that, just a couple so you know my background uh, about the building. Um, I've been in business 35 years, and in that 35 years, I've worked on this building. Uh, I don't even know, four or five different owners. So I'm very familiar with this building and this structure. Um, and some of the things we talked about earlier was the condition. Um, it is not in very good condition right now. And it's, it's happened over time. We know it hasn't put money into it. But, but literally everything from from the mechanical systems, electrical systems, plumbing systems. They're old. I mean, it's an old building. It's a really unique building. It's a decagon, so it's a 10-sided structure. So it's a very cool, unique building. Um, we've done tons of work in there, tons of upgrades, but it is at the point where it needs some love. I mean, it needs some serious attention all the way around. Um, as a side note, side note that relates to the conventions, my wife uh, has a business owner. She currently has two conventions a year in, in the city of Springfield. She brings in 75 to 100 students twice a year to the city of Springfield. Um, they're here for three or four days. Uh, it's educational. It's educational stuff for them. But uh, she's been doing that for four or five years. Uh, the last three or four years, she's done them at the Wyndham at the Wyndham Hotel, the same place that we had our wedding reception. Um, she'll go there. I had the relationship with them, and, and she likes it there, but she'd go there and come back, and, and heating and cooling, she'd have an issue. Heating and <coughs> cooling wouldn't work. Uh, the audio system wasn't great, and she just keeps battling and keeps grinding and keeps coming back. So she obviously would want, will continue to do that, and she continued to have her... Um, to seminars a year. She'll continue to do that. If the Wyndham stays, she'd be at the Wyndham, but, but I, don't know, I don't know where she'll end up next year. So that's just to give you some insight of me and my familiarity with the, with the building. And so what we've done, when David reached out to me quite a while back, got together, we kind of brainstormed, we toured the building, what, what's going to be best, what, what, what I thought would be best, and got together with him and his construction people, what we thought would be best. And we came up with these different mixes of extended stay versus apartments and just 
rolled with it a little bit and played with the numbers and played with seeing how we could make everything work. Again, it's a difficult building to work with because if you've ever been in there, all the rooms are pie shaped. So in between the rooms, there's little wedge shaped stacks and that's where all the unit, that's where all the stand pipes and sprinkler pipes and everything runs up. So you don't have a ton of flexibility with the footprint. So you gotta, you gotta get creative with the footprint because they're all sh little pieces of pizza. They all have fabulous views, but they're these little wedge shapes. So what I'd like to do tonight is kind of go through what, what we're looking at. We're looking at doing a mixture. Every, everyone knows there's currently apartments there, and they've been there since I've known for 35 years I've been working on it. Um, there's, been, there's been apartment units there, 28, 30 apartment units there, and they vary from one bedroom, two bedroom. There's a couple of them that are even really unique. They're two levels, they're two floors. So you could, it's like a townhouse. So they're kind of cool and really unique. So the first image you're seeing up here and the first image you're seeing here, the 30th floor, what we're gonna plan on doing is dedicating it to just a big gathering space and an observation deck. Um, you could hold functions up there. You could do entertainment events and things like that up there. But we really saw this big B being this big 360. You could walk around and the views. Uh, anybody's been up to the restaurants, everybody knows the views. But it's really, really some killer views up there. So that was the plan. 30th floor would be observation, dedicated observation deck, entertainment, functions, and events. 29th floor would be things like food court. Um, restaurant, bar, things like that would occur on the 29th floor. Again, those spectacular views that you see. And then from then there down, we've got a mixture. So this one is, I don't know if that's an extended stay. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a studio unit. So that's a typical studio unit. As David said, they're 370, 380 square feet. Uh, get a little kitchenette, bathroom. We've got the, the needed uh, uh, number of ADA units. There'll be some one-bedroom units, so it'll take up two pie shapes instead of one. These units you're seeing here are just one wedge shape. Um, there'll be, we're looking at maybe having four different styles, you know, different colors, different palettes and things like that, so they won't all be cookie cutter. There'll be a mixture of different colors and palettes and, and the decorations and whatnot. So that's, that would be a typical studio, the typical studio unit that you're seeing there. And then um, uh, 125 hotel rooms, extended stay hotel rooms. That's what you're seeing on the screen now. Um, again, we'd have three or four different schemes of those. We talked about trying to tie in a lot of the motif and a lot of the, a lot of the, the artwork would all tie into Springfield. You know, top to bottom would kind of tie in and pull, pull, get that information out there about Springfield when people come and stay there. Um, so that's that would be the extended stay, 125 extended stay hotel suites. Joe, real quick, yeah, if you don't mind, Mayor. Sure, go ahead. So what what's the big differences between the extended stay versus the studio apartments? Um, Is the it pretty stop, much configured the same, or uh, they're roughly configured the same. There are going to be some, some one bedrooms versus studios where you'd have two twins instead of a, two queens instead of a king. But for the most part, it's mainly the motif of it. It's a little more. Will they have the same refrigerator, stove, all that yeah. stuff? Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. So it's, in a sense, it's just another part yeah. called, I mean, called something a, yeah, different. Yeah, similar footprint, sure. All right. Yeah. Any other Any questions? Other questions? questions? Otherwise, we'll have David go through. Go ahead. His I'm part. sorry. Thank well, you. Thank you for spending your 25th anniversary with yeah. us. Yeah, I, I truly appreciate yeah. that. We'll see how it goes when we get home. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes here tonight. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm going I'm, I'm to pass out the economic study. I know that some of you have received, all of you have received it, but uh, this one has a different cover picture and it has a slightly different number of uh, hotel rooms that were, uh, than the one that you received this morning. That's okay, thank you.
Thank you. What I thought would be a, a, a good use is, um, is to go through the economic study, but not its totality. It's over 40 some odd pages, but really just give you some highlights of, of the economic study, and then we could actually speak about it in, in specific. But you know, what I would, I'll give you an overview in, in, in initially, is that what, what a prize found is that the redevelopment would inspire six and a half times the spending which is going on now at the Wyndham. Currently, the Wyndham is running, I think, as a 23 and a half percent occupancy, 101 rooms. And that, that, that generated about $18,000 per room per year. And we'll go through, you know, what the redevelopment does. But the re re redevelopment does, it expires six and a half times the revenue than the existing fact of the Wyndham today. And we'll go that, we'll go that to specifically. The second thing, which is not in the economic study, and just to reiterate, our investment is over $40 million. It's going to generate 1,600 construction jobs. Oh, sorry, sorry, it's generating 1,400, over 1,400 construction jobs, mm -hmm. and another 200 indirect jobs during the course of its uh, renovation. In addition to that, this modern, multi-purpose development will generate over 48 full-time jobs after it's renovated and after it's constructed. It will give Springfield a brand new, sparkling tourist attraction, which Joe has designed, and I thank him for that, but on a world-class scale. You know, just last week I was speaking to Legends that runs the Willis Tower, there. It's a joint venture between the Mets, uh, between the Mets and, the, uh, and the Cowboys. Uh, they, they own this company called Legends. We're in the traction business. And I made a presentation to them on Springfield and, the, and your visit account and the other tourist attractions in Springfield. And they were very, very excited. And they gave me a lot of different ideas. One was to move the entire food court down onto the lower floor. And, that, and that's something that Joe uh, in, in, in record time changed around, but that came from a professional uh, event and uh, tourist attraction operator, and that's Legends. And they're excited. I haven't, I haven't signed anything, it was, just, it, was, it was just a discussion. So what I'd like to go through is really uh, found in the opening part of this is that the, the is that the We've discussed this, I think, in, 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 our, in our September get-together. It's class A and B apartment properties in downtown Springfield are occupied, according to a prize, at 95%. As I mentioned before, when we met, there are large waiting lists for apartments. And, there's a, and it indicates a large pent-up demand for units. Uh, certainly, uh, the health care uh, complexes, which you have for, are in, are in desperate need of walkable housing for their employees, for their residents, for their doctors, and for the people that work in those hospitals. And currently, there is no housing for that community. The same could be said for the state of Illinois and the people who work in the capital, as well as in the insurance companies. There is no housing for the people that work downtown. Um, as I mentioned, healthcare, there's actually no there's actually an ordinance that people have to have to be within a certain proximity of these hospitals, and, and candidly, they they're looking and they're on waiting lists. Um, the the proposed adaptive reuse project will provide enormous amount of construction jobs. As I mentioned before, over 1,400 construction jobs. We we have gotten a letter of support from your local unions, and they're very much in favor, the trade unions uh, of this project. But it will also have spillover effect. If you have 1,400 construction people working on a site, 
it was, according to a prize, will spill over to over another, another 200 jobs from that. As I mentioned before, there are over 48 jobs between the residential piece of this and the hotel piece. There will be full-time employment. And there will be a new tourist attraction, which I, which I mentioned before, um, which will only enhance tourism and will only enhance another reason to come to, come to Springfield. Um, so in this, at the bottom of the chart, is you can see on the far left is your current hotel rooms and current apartments that together generate about $2.4 million for Springfield in spend, in actual spend, not just in room rate, but in actual spend. And on the far right is a total as renovated, um, that being the hotels and the proposed apartments, would generate over $8 million in actual spend. Combined with the retail that is the former Bennigan site, the former men's clothier site, and the two other retail sites, and the Starbucks, it that will generate $16 million in annual spend. Today, this hotel generates for downtown Springfield $2.4 million. So that's a six and a half million dollar, a six and a half times increase than what is being currently generated from the Wyndham. The Wyndham is at 27 percent here, 27 and a half percent occupancy, and we've spoken about. Joe has spoken about the condition of the of the Wyndham. TripAdvisor has spoken about the condition of the Wyndham, and basically, it is a it is it has a lot of deferred maintenance. It's in a class, as the mayor said, of older hotels that probably wouldn't be built today, and they're, and they're somewhat obsolete, and cannot get financed. And so regardless on you know, what you're looking at, you, there is no way that this hotel at 27.5% can actually stay and continue in business. And so a redevelopment is, is, is almost a default of, what, of, of what's going to happen. But the, currently it's at 27% was Mr. Dahl has told us that Springfield's at 50%. So people are making choices. People are making choices every day. Should I stay at the Wyndham, which is tired and old, and I'm not having a good guest experience, or I'm not going to have a good guest experience? All they have to do is look at TripAdvisor. Or should I go out to, um, uh, to the State House Inn, or should I go across the street to the Doubletree, where the TripAdvisor and the ratings are much higher? The Wyndham situation, as far as a hotel, I'm not going to speak to it. I'm not operating it, but the public has spoken. It's at 27% in a, in a, in a, in a, in a in an occupancy, metropolitan occupancy of 50%. It was in bankruptcy. Tower, hotel, tower group bought it out of bankruptcy. So this was all pre-pandemic. It was in trouble before the pandemic. It was in trouble before COVID. No money has gone into this hotel. And the occupancy reflects that. And that's not, that, that has nothing to do with, with, with me. I would like to go to the, um, really, the, this is on page 15, if you could bring up page 15. So as I mentioned before, this, this net gain from what is being spent now of $18,250 per room versus a person who rents here in the apartment complex of 42201 and that means that this 18250 per year is being compared to a remaining balance of spend in Springfield of 23211 is a significant difference in downtown spend. And what that, what that difference is is below where you see the economic impact. Current hotel rooms generate for Springfield, not in just in room rate, but in actual spend, $1,843,250. And the current apartments, of which the 27, spend $626,685. So the total amount that Springfield is getting in spend, not tax revenues, but in spend, people spending money in restaurants, drugstores, and medical, and in the whole range of gamut, 
is $2,469,935. Versus, and this is not my numbers, this is a prize, a hotel rooms of which we are suggesting 125, would spend 1,679,000. And the big difference there is there's 125 extended stay hotels that they're suggesting would be operating at 73% occupancy and, and attracting a higher spending customer and apartments, of which we're suggesting 275 units, would spend $6,359,691. So the total as in renovated, once finished, the annual spend would be $8,038,691. That's assuming they're all rented. You can't assume that the hotels, if you're going based on occupancy on the hotel, you can't assume that the, they're all going to be rented. I don't know. What is your question, sir? Well, you're making assumptions that the ho that that you're you're going to rent every apartment. Yes, I'm that's making what a, you're going by here. Well, we we've actually taken the occupancy, which is in Springfield, which is currently running at 95. Uh, apprised it, not me. Apprised took the occupancy of Springfield, which is running at 95 percent. And there's a lot of data in this 40-page report that I would implore you to take a look at. So at 95%, it's been, and it's been fairly constant for the last six years at 95%, in which the four apartment complexes which surround the Wyndham are fully occupied and have waiting lists. So we, we have a, we've assumed a 90% occupancy, not 100% occupancy, five points below what Springfield's been operating at for the last six years. But you're also looking at, at apartments that are that are substantially smaller than the other apartments around. No, that, 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 that's not the case. The square footages are in your economic impact study. We only compared apartments that were similar in square footage and in a square footage and, um, but I would tell you the Wyndham or what this will be, a good homes community will have far larger amenity set, world-class gym, pool, views, uh, laundry facilities, which others uh, have much smaller laundry facilities, meeting rooms, co-working spaces, um, tenant lounges, tenant game rooms. I mean, I mean, there's a big difference to, to what our good homes communities around the country look like compared to the Class A and Class B housing, which is in Springfield. I think that uh, Ryan McCarthy was here last time, and he said he spoke to a number of communities that we were in and, 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 uh, and saw some of the product. In fact, I think in September I showed you some of the pictures from our Warwick project and, uh, and, how, they, and, and, um, and how they look and how they feel. Um, so we took, we took this assumption that a prize took was at 90% occupancy, and which is five, five percentage points below what your occupancy is today for the last six years, and it took a 73% occupancy for the extended stay units, which is higher than uh, the current occupancy. <coughs> However, that came from three different extended stay companies. The one that we, the one that we have been working closely with is Premier Suites, which is a Wyndham brand, and they came in at eighty-two percent, I believe. So the seventy-three percent was the mean average of three extended stay companies, of extended stay hotel companies, of what they thought they could um, achieve in this market. So you know, none of this is a my assumption. All this, the whole reason that the mayor and the city asked us to commission a third party report was to actually distance my assumption or the assumptions of good homes uh, from the reality or from the research that was done by an independent third party that does it for municipalities. They don't really do it for private developers. So this was, a prize does it for municipalities across the country and this is what they came out with. And their task is in, is the beginning of the, your economic study of what they were tasked to do. So yes, it is based upon those assumptions, it's based upon that research. Alderman Redpath. So if, if you got the capacity that they're looking for, where are you gonna park all these people? Well, currently the parking garage, I think has over I don't know, 480 or 500 spaces. You don't, you, you, uh, don't you only have 50 or 60 of those spots? No, the city has 20, which have been designated. The rest of the parking garage is in the control of the, uh, is in the control, the same control as the, uh, as the hotel unit. So, do you own that parking lot? 
the, it's a it's a land easement. So uh, as, as as I understand it, if, you know, and there's an ease and there's a usage agreement with with the city. I know there's a lot of discrepancies on if you own it, if you don't own it. I just want to know the real answer, and I'm I'm saying that because if you own it, you got to pay property taxes on it. If you don't own it, then then we if we own it, you don't have to do that. That's what my question is. But what, uh, I'm not a that? tax expert, so what so what is the question? Corporation Council can answer that. Yeah. You may, you may recall, I think we had talked about this uh, 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 some time ago. Uh, there's kind of a hybrid arrangement there where the top uh, fourth and fifth floor are owned actually by the hotel or the hotel uh, property. The first three floors are actually owned and operated or owned by the city. There's currently an operating and management agreement, a 25-year operating management agreement between the city and the hotel owner. That is also tied to our uh, 911 lease. You know, at the top of the Hilton. But that was a one one time payment for seven hundred thousand dollars for the 911 lease. Isn't that right? No. It wasn't. No. We we get the we get the 911 uh, for free. That we don't pay a rent. Uh, that's part of the consideration for the uh, operating and maintenance agreement with the hotel. So they do own it. They own the they own the parking ramp that they fourth, that, fourth and fifth floor. So only. that that means they're exempt because we own the bottom three floors. Do they pay property taxes on the uh, fourth and fifth floor? At, at some point they did. I don't know the current status. At some point, they paid the the prior owners paid real estate taxes on the fourth and fifth floor. Okay, but Thank I don't you. I don't know the current status this moment. Okay, thanks. Go ahead and continue, please. Okay. Next page. I, so the, the analysis that was done, if I go back to that page 14 that you had up there. Yes. The, the analysis that was done um, on the buying power of a, of a hotel guest coming to the Wyndham in the last 12 months, and that's an occupied room in the last 12 months on a per guest basis versus the buying power of a resident renting an apartment in um, this new Good Homes Tower is before you. And I think the most important piece of this is to, is to look at the occupancy. As I mentioned before, um, a 27.5% occupancy the past year it equates to 37,038 rooms sold. Um, and if you compare that to the ADR and the occupancy that's being projected by the 125 extended stay um, hotel rooms, it's kind of net the same. Because the, these hotel rooms that we're suggesting that we're renovating in a brand new renovated building with a $40 million investment is going to tr attract a larger spender, it's going, to, it's going to have a much higher occupancy, and it's going to have a much higher ADR. Now if you compare the hotel resident or the hotel guest that you're getting now at the Wyndham and what they're spending in meals, in souvenirs, in visiting uh, Springfield, and you compare that to a resident, it's really quite substantial. So if you look at the 101 occupied rooms, it's $18,000 per room per year versus 275 apartments with the, that resident after they've paid their rent, after they've, um, after they've uh, had a savings, after they've paid their medical, but their free and clear spend is about $24,000. That goes into downtown Springfield. And that's in a renovated, brand new tower that we're spending $40 million on. 
So that's a huge difference. And if you, if you go to the, the next page, this is where it really breaks down. What, if you include on this number the, the restaurant sales, providing that, you know, our belief is that if you have 275 residential units and you have 125 brand new hotel units, and you have a vibrant community, well, we're told by local brokers, local brokers, that restaurant gets rented. And we asked a prize to tell us what that would do. And when we looked at Bennigan's, we took their number. Bennigan's was reporting about a $3.5 million number, and we took a discount to that and put $2.8 million. And then when you look at the bar, the bar, we take, we've taken numbers around town that are reported that a prize got for us, of, and we put in a number of $900,000. We put the other retail, and the three other retail bays in this building, and we put a million dollars for the other three bays of sales. And you look at the Starbucks on a stabilized basis of $1.3 million to $1.5 million dollars, Together, that retail, and that retail only really sings and really comes to life if you renovate this building and you have an active, vibrant residential community and you have brand new hotel rooms that we're proud of, not that we're trying to mask the TripAdvisor comments or, or hear the different complaints that, that we might be getting about a tired hotel, but a brand new sparkling gem across the, the street from the convention center that would generate an additional $6 million. So that, on top of the spend for the residents and for these brand new hotel guests, come well over $15 million. And that $15 million is as compared to the $2.4 million that's being generated today. So that's 15 million, over $15.5 million that will go into Springfield's economy every year versus the 2.4 that's currently going in. That's six and a half times. And that's really the story. You know, and the story is, you know, I could tell you all about the construction jobs, I can tell you all about the investment, I can, all, I can tell you what I told you the last two presentations, and you were very kind to hear me out, all about downtown revival, all about how this is gonna spur the downtown and really come alive, but it really comes down to facts, and the facts are numbers, and the, this project will generate six and a half times more money in spend uh, for Springfield than it currently does now. <clears throat> and I tell you, the currently does now is like an ice cube in your hand. Every day that hotel that does not get investment, it melts a little bit, and this will slowly dissipate. The current owner has told you how quickly it's gonna dissipate. And so I'm not here to Listen, I want to develop this property, but I'm not here to do, you know, do scare tactics or anything like that. I am in the hotel business. I don't like the hotel business. I've got a bunch of hotels. I don't like the hotel business. I like what we do, which is provide amazing residential communities at mar for market rate tenants. And your community has something that very few communities really don't have, which is that you have 54,000 people that work within two miles, mile and a half to two miles, that could walk to work. And specifically, the medical centers, specifically the, the jobs, the government jobs, and some of the insurance jobs. And that I don't walk into too many places where you have that. And the other anomalies, you don't, ha you don't have any available residential. But I've, I've gone through that story twice, and that's part of the vision statement that, that we met on in July, and then we met again in September. This, and I think it was a good move for the city and, and for the mayor to ask that we go out and hire independent third party to put together basically what they do for municipalities across the country, an economic impact study of what this development would do for Springfield. <clears throat> and you know, I could go on, I can answer questions, but, that, but this six and a half times is the most significant fact. Today it's 2.4, I can't tell you what's gonna be tomorrow if if there's no investment in that in that in that hotel. Alderman Conley. 
Thank you, David. I, I appreciate that you're ready for questions. Um, and, and first of all, I just want to tell you, I mean, these these pictures are great. The the image that you're bringing and the energy to, to Springfield, obviously, I'd like to see more investment in downtown. Um, that said, I have a little bit of um, I, I'm not entirely certain. Like, and again, it's the same kind of numbers that we're looking at with this analysis that we're even talking apples and oranges in terms of apartments. Um, <coughs> Your unit mix will have 87% of the units at 350 square feet. I think they're larger, but yeah. No, that's 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 the that's the assumptions that's in right. this that you gave to us, and and I did not get a chance to read this. I was at work today, so didn't. This is I'm I'm going through this quickly, but this is this is your unit mix. It says studios 238, which is 87%, will be 350 square feet with a unit rent rate of 825 so in the comparables the closest one to that size is 532 feet 532 square feet which is almost 50 percent larger than what you're talking about almost 35 yeah. at, a, at a rent that's comparable I'll give you that the overwhelming majority of, of these units are going to be a single pizza shaped hotel room size. You're talking about 30 rooms at 700 square feet um, with a rental rate of $1,200. That comes maybe closest to the average size at Lincoln Towers, which is 879 square feet for a similar, again, $1,200 rental rate. Um, and then we're down to three two bedrooms, three three bedrooms where the square footage from the two bedroom to the three bedroom goes up by 100 square feet. We're, the numbers here don't reflect, in my opinion, apartment sizes that are comparable to other apartments downtown. And, and I can tell you, I mean, you can say, yeah, it's a, it's a one square mile. I was talking to someone in my ward recently um, who's renting a three bedroom house with a yard for $1,100 $1 a month. Um, and that's a five minute drive to the hotel or to the hospital. So I, I just, but I do appreciate your vision. I, I really do. Um, I'm not comfortable that the demand is here for a 350 square foot apartment with a kitchenette right next to the door, I think. Um, that's, that's a I, well, and th those are the extended stays. We didn't actually get the um, apartments up on the overhead. Yeah, so I'm, I'm looking at the, at the apartments are down below you. Okay, it's still, I, I'm just saying, while I, I do very much appreciate what you're trying to do, um, I, have, I have significant concerns about the size of these apartments and the fact that the overwhelming majority of the apartments, 87%, will be 350 square feet. Yeah, we, I think the 350 is, I know it's, it's in this report, I think the, when Joe measured them, they're actually... They're, they're, I, I they're, think they're, we need to be very careful then, because if you're saying 350 is what's in here, but that's different from what's over there, I mean, now we're throwing out assumptions about... No, but I, I think... I mean, they, you just gave us a $15 million number that's going to be guaranteed to come in after these apartments go through. Why, one, I did not mention the word guaranteed. It was an okay. assumption that a independent third party had put together in their economic study. And I'm looking at those assumptions right here. And, and again, these are they're smaller units. Mm -hmm. So if I, I just, I'm just trying just, to say there are concerns about the size of this. On a comparison basis, because this is certainly something that we address across the country. So the big difference between us and the downtown comps is you know we include parking, we have laundry, we include the gym, we include an indoor pool, which very yeah. few, which very few have. We um, barbecue we, grill, business center, clubhouse, elevators, exercise facilities. Yeah. I mean, these are these are amenities that are included in some of these other units some too. Are. Yeah, and some some not. And what we have that nobody else has is a view. Right. Right. The hotel and has so, a view too. So you know, too. for the yeah. first ten floors. You have the extended stay, and then for the next 20, um, next 18 floors, you have the residential. So if, you are look, if you're on the bottom part of the residential, you are at the 11th floor of a building, which is probably eight stories higher than the tallest building, the tallest residential building in, in, in Springfield. 
in a in addition, pizza there, it's, shaped it's, 350 square foot apartment. Well, I think they're larger, but anyway, they, yeah, and I know what that says, but yeah, but they, I think the architect had, had measured them. So, um, in addition, in addition to that, we're including protected parking, game rooms, tenant lounges. Um, you know, there's a whole you know, on-site workstation with, with people, with people a clubhouse where people could do, um, do, do, do their work in, laundry facilities, um, as I said, pool, gym. And again, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Alderman Rep. No, and, and, and we wouldn't be making this investment unless we thought we're very confident with the studies that we've done as far as the market goes. So, but thank, thank you. you for your insight. Alderman Rep. Mr. Mitchell, um, you, you said you're going to put it, it's going to have 31 bedrooms, three, two, and three, three bedrooms. How many currently uh, do you have in one, two, and three bedrooms in there? I think there are currently 27 apartments. I mean, I don't own it now, so I'm, I'm speaking, you know. From you don't know if they're one, two, or three bedrooms? I though? think there are 27 apartments in a combination of one, ones and twos, and there's one presidential esque suite that that that's a three bedroom currently okay. so uh, uh, tell me how you would recruit the tenants for this i mean you're going to have you're looking to get graduate students maybe full time employees uh, how are you going to how are you going to recruit those that's okay. that I, I i i understand your story your vision of what you think is going to happen i just i i really find it hard to believe i, well, I like, I, like I, i'll tell you i'll tell you two things the first is previously when we met, I think in September, I'd given you the overview of Pegasus, which is our management company, and they have a program of uh, marketing and leasing that goes out, I think it goes out 16, 16 months. In, in a lot of municipalities that we're in, uh, we've actually entered into partnerships, if you will, with the local medical centers for the resident population. Residents on, on a whole make about $50,000 a year and their transportation to and from work is, is, is challenged, and uh, hospitals like to have, provide quality housing for them. Um, I think that the similar sort of case exists in government, in your government and also in your insurance industry. Um, but you know, Pegasus has put together a very detailed approach to how they would uh, map out, if you call it recruiting, but map, map out marketing to these tenants. There's 275 of them. And so, currently the waiting list, I'm sorry to interrupt, but the waiting list in Springfield, as of last week, there were 43 people on waiting lists in Springfield. 43, okay, and that's without asking. So will there be uh, rules uh, for your 238, 375 square foot rooms? Will there be rules how many people can stay in there? I mean, would, can they have one living in there, two living in there? Is there going to be rules for that? I, I think that uh, the, I think the maximum would probably be two. Two. <clears throat> okay. Maximum. I mean, most most in most cases where we have this, you know, I've, I've not. I, I, you know, it's, it's it's mostly singular. So the bathroom in the morning is going to be pretty tough to get to, I bet. But I don't know. I mean, they, they'll be elbow to elbow. I'm re re relying upon my architects to be married for 25 years to design the best bathroom I had, We had possible. 10 kids in our family, one bathroom. I know how that works. <laughs> so did we. All of them McMinimum. We had 12 kids in our family and five boys in one room. At any rate, um, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> tenant. <laughs> what, um, let's look at what we can all agree upon. What we all can agree upon is that this is a very old um, this is a worn-out hotel. That's a better word. It's a worn-out hotel that needs reinvestment. And this is an opportunity to get reinvestment. I think it's been pointed out that these um, big old box hotels are not finding, they're not getting financing. And so you're an expert in mixed reuse, uh, and, and, to, and that generates financing. Now, I know there's concern about can we fill up this hotel later on. But um, I think, you know, that's a concern that the council doesn't have to worry about. Why? Because that's a risk you're going to take on. That's true. You, you're going you're to put tens of millions of dollars into this, um, uh, into this ho former hotel, and then when it's all done, you're going to try to fill it up. And then if, it, if your assumptions are wrong, that's going to be a risk on you 
But guess what? The city's ended up with a vastly improved hotel, a vastly improved structure that somebody will want to use, and maybe you'll, you'll um, adjust your mixture of apartments and, and extended stay in hotel, whatever. You'll do whatever you can to, to make the cash flow work, but that's not really a concern that we have to be worried about at this point, because as a city, we want to make sure that the, the Wyndham gets reinvestment, and you're offering tens of millions of dollars of reinvestment. And uh, so uh, if we vote, um, we got to vote yes to this, to, to, to make this happen. I think we're passing up a huge opportunity if we don't. Thank you. Alderman Hanauer. Yeah, thank you. I, for, just for the record, I want everybody to know that we just got this today. Mm -hmm. So we have not had a chance to look at it. I don't think that's fair to us. You know, that we, this crap happens all the time. We need more time for this because we, we sit up there and you're putting numbers out and we look like a bunch of idiots because we can't ask the proper questions. I mean, I, you know, it, it's... It, it just boggles my mind. Um, I, I don't know that I can trust your numbers I don't, I, because I haven't had the opportunity to really sit down and dive into it. And, you know, we're talking about a big investment. Uh, you know, that's something we've never had. We've not gotten one pro forma from you yet. What's to ask from the city? What's, the, what's, what's your gap? We've not gotten that. If it's $20 million, we can't do it That's before it. we even go any farther. We can't do it because, but we, we've asked and you, nobody will give us the answer. So the only thing I'm asking for right now. No, what I'm asking you, I don't care. You're asking for the zoning. I'm asking for what your planning and zoning commission has. has I'm approved. asking you what is the, you, every developer, when they go into a project should run the numbers. I've talked to many developers about this. You should have a pro forma that tells where the gaps are, and we should have those gaps. And you have failed to give it to us because if, if the gap is 15 million, we don't have it in the TIF downtown. If it's 20 million, we don't have it in the TIF downtown. But we don't know because you are, it, it, it's either you don't have it, which I don't believe, because you wouldn't, you wouldn't push forward to buy the building if you didn't have all the numbers. Or you're, wanting, you're, you're, you're uh, reluctant to tell us, and my biggest concern is that you're going to use the hotel rooms as hostage to say, well, I can't do the hotel rooms because you can't give me the money. That's my biggest concern. And I'm, I'm just telling you, we've asked for the numbers, haven't got them, haven't got them, haven't got them, and I see that as a problem. We've had other developers come down, try to pull this stuff, and they've and and we've 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 had had problems with them. On that, uh, there was a zoning that this is zoning, so Corporation Council can explain okay. zoning. But the reality of it is, we've approved zoning without the numbers, and the one was on Madison. I mean, that was that was uh, passed by this council, I think, unanimously, for a hundred unit. Apartment complex, nobody knew that they're going to come back and ask for TIF or any of that. So that has to come back to the council. But Corporation Council, if you could elaborate on the zoning or if Matt wants to, but I think we need to explain the zoning, and that's what the developer is saying is this is a zoning request. Now, with regards to anything further of assistance, that has to come back before this body. But Corporation Council? Correct. No, I mean, <clears throat> I think everybody understands that that's. Uh, we're here on a zoning request for a land use uh, request, uh, and uh, th there's certainly other action that the city council uh, has to take or may have to take depending on uh, if there is a request for TIF or if there's a request for PACE, those basic ideas. Uh, but right now, there are no... Uh, th that still has to come forward with details and so on. So. Right now, you're exactly correct. It is just a zoning case, but there's other actions that certainly will be have to be reviewed. And the other actions can be tied to very specific items, like any development agreement, to explain exactly what the project is, what it consists of, what's the schedule, what's the construction amounts, like we did, for example, Legacy Point. You may remember there's a huge amount of work and so, so on. So 
this initial step is not the final step. It's the beginning where all these other items are going to have to get uh, sorted out. And it would come back to the council, you know, for review. Alderman McMenamin. Well, that's exactly right. You're not asking for any money at this point in time. Uh, no, tonight I'm only just asking for the city council to ratify what planning and zoning has suggested and approved. And as I remember, uh, last time Alderman uh, Purchase offered some very strong conditions to the zoning that would require you to provide us with your spending plan for the improvements and the timeline for the Im for the Yes. the improvements and that's all down the road if we but this is the first step this just opens the door to further um, the type of information that uh, Alderman Hanar wants to get correct so just uh, give us gives an opportunity to move this project potentially forward I mean, to be specific I'm asking for 75 additional units to what the 200 that are already in, they're already allowed by the current zoning of which 27 exist. So really, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm really asking for 48 more units comprising of another 17,520 feet, as I said before, in a 390,000 square foot building. From a, from a zoning request, you know, it's less, it's less than 5% of the total mass of the building. It's 4.8% of the total mass of the building. We can talk about, you know, Develop, I think it's called a development agreement or anything, any of those items, but I'm not here before you with that. Alderman DeSento. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so as I asked before, will we have to close this structure down for a year for, renov for renovations? Because that's what was discussed before. Right. Well, previously I was asking for 400 residential units would be the entire um, structure. We're, we're, we're trying to work with a, as I said, with Premier Suites, which is a division of, of Wyndham, to do a phased-in development of the hotel portion. The rest of the structure would be closed down because that would be the residential portion. But we're, we don't have a confirmation yet, but we're trying to work in to do floor by floor, or two floors at a time, so that there would be availability. And my second question is, so that's good news. But my second question is, would you be willing to amend the number of hotel rooms? We need more hotel rooms. That's, that's the crux of this. So would you be willing to increase the number of hotel rooms? I, I, I don't know what you're suggesting. I mean, as far as I'm asking number, for more I mean, hotel rooms. Well, we've, we've increased it, you know, as you remember when we met. I um, remember. I'm asking. From 75. Then we were, I think, I think it was, originally we, we, we originally looked at this building, we wanted 600 residential units, right? So then we had 400, and then it was, I think it was, it was 320 and 80, and now we're up to 125, which is, you know, large as a discussion with the city and going back, back and forth. I mean, currently that's what we have financing for. I mean, I think the mayor and Mr. Zirko had spoken to, um, um, a bank, if you will, financing sources, and that's what was, and that's what was discussed. So I, I don't know what the suggestion is. I mean, as far as number, I mean, I know that Mr. Dahl would like to have 400. So you know, and I'm, well, I'm, a number uh, was thrown out earlier of 150. Mm -hmm. So if I think you know, it, it lo so just in the, in the my world for a second, my world is that residential gets financed, hotels do not. Hotels in Springfield. Do not get financed. Okay. Currently, you know, your state house in is a receivership. I mean, you you know, this hotel came out of a bankruptcy, and you know, I mean, hats off to Scott and, and 50% occupancy, but that's a tough one. And the only way that there's 125 or 150 hotel rooms in this is because there's a residential component. Currently, there's a massing issue. You know, if you went for 125 to 150. You know, I don't know where the extra 25 hotel rooms come in because the only way you pay for the hotel rooms, because the hotel rooms are somewhat of a lost leader for us and certainly a, a lost value for us because the hotel rooms are not as worth as much as the residential units, just, just in market terms. But, but if there was a way to create or look at space, and I would have to talk to my architect to create another 10 hotel rooms or whatever, whatever the number is, 
you know, we would work with, 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 with Mr. Petty and his team to try to figure that one out. I don't know where it is, but you know, I'm not, a, I'm not an architect. But I'm here as a partner, right? And, I'm, and I've been here as a partner for the last five months now. And um, you know, so I would like, and I, I think I've tried to be empathetic in, in hearing, you know, I mean, listen, it's been an education, right? Uh, about the conventions, about the meetings, and, I, I, and I'm, 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 I want to embrace it. I mean, your success is really our success, right? You wouldn't have 54,000 jobs if you were not successful. You would, and you would not have me if you didn't have those jobs. So you know, it's, it's, it's a very organic sort of relationship. And so I'm here to work with you. And so I'm not saying no. I, would, I really would want to talk to Joe and his team, and you know, we, we have to figure out the program. But in order to pay for that, I mean, and, and this is the dynamic, in order to pay for that, I need the 275 residential units. And today, on camera, my financiers and the people that are providing me the money are watching. And I will tell you candidly, because they told me before I went to this meeting, we've seen this happen twice, David. Okay, and I, I really don't want to, I really don't want to see a, a no vote on uh, now, because I don't want to lose them, to be, to be, be candid. Alderman Donnelly. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I, I have a question about, I guess it's to either Mr. Zirkel or, or zoning uh, staff. You, the, the words that were used earlier were extended stay, and I want to make sure we, I understand that if we're talking about whatever the number is for hotels, 125 hotel rooms, how do we make sure that those are utilized for hotel rooms? What I'm getting at is what would prevent, not that anybody would do this, but what would prevent, instead of charging and making these numbers up, $125 a night for a hotel room that for we're going to lease one of the extending stays out sort of as an apartment for make up a number. Let's just say, I gotta get my glasses out here. Let's just say $825 uh, a month. In other words, you're using it as an apartment. How do we, with our zoning rules, ensure that they're used as a hotel room? Just, just very briefly, the uh, zoning uh, would restrict uh, the residential units to the uh, uh, number indicated, whether it's 275 or 250 or whatever that number is, the uh, zoning would prohibit the use of a hotel room as a permanent resident. Now, the residents and the hotel, the hotel room has a different characteristic. It cannot be the subject of a lease. Uh, it cannot be the subject of, uh, for example, there'd still have to be hotel services, like maid services or room services, all of those various characteristics of a hotel, that it is my understanding that uh, the uh, developer or other, other persons talking about this, that adds a cost factor that they'll, they cannot do that with apartments. So a hotel room is a hotel room. It's going to be furnished. It would have maid service. It's going to have linen service. It would be a characteristic that um, would be that uh, in that manner, it could not be the subject of a lease or a long-term agreement. Yeah, I mean, I understand that, but what, what I'm getting at is the, the, the essence of the, I'll say, hesitation that I'm hearing is every, most are concerned about lo either losing all the hotel rooms or losing hotel rooms because I've said it before in this room, and I try not to be repetitive, but I will say it again, that I, I feel strongly that if you, once you lose the hotel rooms, you lose them forever. I'm just trying to find a way to ensure that we have a healthy convention environment, we have healthy tourism, we have a viable building. Uh, as, I, as I said before, this is you know a structure that is near and dear to all our hearts. Whether you, whether you like the way it looks or not, it is a, it is a prevalent uh, structure in the city of Springfield. It's very visible, and, and we all like to see it be successful, but I'm concerned about losing the hotel rooms. And, you know, we talked before about some type of a guarantee and, and, and uh, flag involvement, meaning whether it's Hilton, Marriott, whatever is an example. And uh, I, I'm just not quite there yet, so. I don't know if there's a question there, but there is a flag involvement, right, as I mentioned. You mentioned that you're discussing with the Wyndham yeah. subset. Well, but so. pr pr Premier Suites, which is Premier there. Suites, right. Uh, and others, um, you know, our, and we, 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 we won't be managing that hotel, it'll be a third party manager, um, and Mr. Zirkel's right, these are not subject to a, a lease, um, 
But, but just to go to your point, if I can, at 27 percent, which is up from 20 percent occupancy for this hotel, which is, equates it to 101 rooms, at the rate it's going, I don't think it's doing anybody any favors, truly. I mean, it's certainly not improving the economy of downtown, because it's kind of, as currently as is, it only contributes $2.4 million to the economy of downtown. And so, you know, what I'm suggesting, you know, and you could take the economic study for whatever it's worth, is a $15 million contribution to the economy downtown. And then, you know, there's also different tax, tax benefits that would come to downtown also directly from, from, from this property, sales tax benefits from, the, from this property. So, um, but, you know, again, we're here to discuss zoning, so you had a zoning question. This is, you know, flag. This is an independent third-party manager. These are not subject to any leases, you know. Well, I, I think, and I asked last time, and I was very adamant about it, we, I asked you specifically about what will your, I, I understand the difference between zoning, don't let anybody get preachy on me because I understand it, the difference between zoning and what would have to come subsequently. However, uh, I did ask about last time, two, last two times, about what you anticipated your TIF request would be as an example, and, and I never got an answer. I think that's a fair question, but uh, I'm not going to, because here's why. Because if we grant this zoning change tonight, and it's, it's made, the change is made, okay? And then we don't know what is going to be asked financially of the city. And, and one could argue that we have more leverage if we know the whole, know the whole package. I'm not, suggesting that we, uh, I'm not suggesting that we do anything outside our rules. Don't get me wrong here. But I, th I think that would uh, provide some comfort. That's all. I think that's what you were saying, Alderman Hanner. I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but last that's what time, I asked for last but time. The last time that we spoke about this, this was subject to an approval if there was a development agreement, if right. I did come back and ask for anything from the city. So the zoning would evaporate like that. Your approval would evaporate like that if you didn't, if, you, if A, I didn't right. keep the agreement, but B, if, if you didn't approve the development agreement. Right, but that's not what you put in your request this time. That's no, I only put for a zoning request. What's that? I only, I, no, I've only, I've only asked what you're planning in right, zoning. Right, but we, you know, you would think logically we're building from where we were last. Anyway, enough. I'm not done, Mayor. Yeah, Corporation Council can answer that. Uh, but Alderman Hanard, do you want to go ahead? Yeah, real quick, you know, I just want to explain why I've, I'm asking this. Okay, we're talking about, and people have talked about zero hotel rooms, right? That, that was brought up earlier, okay? I don't know how that, it's, it's dealing with zoning. And what, the reason why I say we need the numbers is because if we can't deliver on the numbers, guess what? He's bought the building. He's bought the building. And then... If we can't give him the numbers, what happens to the building? Psst, down the tubes. That's, that's why I asked the question. You talk about zero hotels, right? It, it could happen that way because we don't know the numbers. And, and that bothers me. And, and I think that they know what the numbers are. They don't want to tell us until they get the building. And ultimately... My concern is we will not be able to match it, match what they need, because it, it's going to take a substantial, you said it yourself, a substantial investment in that building to increase. And I think you said it as well. Um, and I am concerned that the city will not be able to give them the money that they need. And that hotel and, and the whole project's going to go belly up. And then we'll, then we will have zero hotel rooms with, out any chance of getting anything back that's that's the reason why I asked the question and I realize you know I, I realize it's not zoning related but it is zoning related because we're we're complaining we're, we're not complaining but we're concerned about 125 rooms zero rooms whatever 50 rooms I don't care what it is but if he can't make the project work money wise because the city can't put the financing that he needs in the whole whole project is belly up. That's that's my concern. Well, the, the mayor has spoken to the people. I mean, over and above our equity, who are providing our financing, and has, and has gotten a reference. And 
you know, as far as this project, as well as the rest of our projects, as well as the ones that have already been financed. So I am confident that this is, get, that this is getting financed. What I'm asking for today is, I don't want to say it's simple, because obviously it's not simple, because we, we've, been just, we've been here for <laughs> three times before. But the, you, you made an assumption that, that the building purchase is conditioned, well, you didn't say that. You said I already own the building, and then I'm going to get the fight. It's fair to assume that you do not, I mean, there, there, there's a sequence to our transaction, which I'm not at liberty to discuss, but the, this project is going to get done, and it's, it's financed, and it's ready to be financed upon your zoning approval. <clears throat> now, will I... Have I had preliminary discussions and investigated different incentives that the city has offered to others? Yes. But I'm not going to. This is a sequenced program. The first piece is, is does it work for my financial resources? And my financial re resources require a minimum of 275 residential units. Not 250, not 200. Listen, if it was 200, I wouldn't be here. I've got 200, it's 200 as of right. So I'm asking for an additional 75 units, of so which what, 27 already exist. So what you're saying right now, what you just said, is that you, you, will, you do not require any help from the that. city. I didn't say that. You, 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 there's no gap. No, I, 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 there's I, no I, gap whatsoever in the... In, I don't know. The, 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 let me let me say this. So let's just move on. We got a lot of speakers. It's getting well, Real I would like to state what I said, so that you so, you, so you're not under any misinterpretation. I've researched the different incentives and I've discussed the different incentives that might be available to developers in downtown, and we have not done any work on that. But separate and apart from that. We would like to move forward with the zoning request because the first part of that, which is the additional 75 units of which 27 exist already, is required in order for us to move forward by our financial resource. Otherwise, this, otherwise this project, the Springfield project as we call it, would just go aside. We've got 23 of these, okay? And so, you know, I, I'm, tomorrow I'm in Jackson, Mississippi. I'm looking at, a, at what was a Marriott, okay? And so that one will get done. I'm not saying, you know, we, we, spent, we spent a lot of time. So this is a very simple, from a, from, a, a, from a zoning request point of view, it's simple. But if and when I come back for the development agreement, then I'll be very happy to share any gaps or any performance. And just so everybody's on the same page, uh, what was discussed as far as incentives, the same thing that was discussed with uh, Mr. Rajabi, targeted TIF, uh, PACE. Yep. And then uh, possibly enterprise. So, so those were the three options, and the TIF. So just so everybody knows, it's not going to drain the TIF. What they do is they whatever's generated by the project goes back into the project. Over and above. But those were the only ones. Over. But the other side of it is because I've asked what you asked. You know what happens if it's voted down and it hits the wall? And I'll ask Scott Dahl to come up because people think that could happen, and they said, well. Uh, the value would be around three million dollars, and there may be some people out there to buy for three million. Now, our contention was, Mr. Rajabi doesn't—he's not going to let it go because he has too much invested. He has about eight million purchase, is my understanding, plus the million for Starbucks, and so he's not going to let that go. But I don't know if uh, Director Dahl wants to speak well, to that. But it works both ways. It could hit the wall both ways. But what you have here is the developer <clears throat> stating that it's not going to hit the wall. He's talked to financiers. And well, you, you spoke to them as well. Mm -hmm. you, right. Mayor. Mm -hmm. Alderman Gregory. Yes, I, I, I just would like to say I, I think we've heard his case, and I think we've heard from all of our council members, and, and you know, I think it's time to move on to our speakers so we can hear them. Yeah. Maybe they have heard mm -hmm. something that changed their mind to support you. Um, and, and, and then so we can go on and make our decision. We've been here two hours. Three and, hours. And, Thank Three you for hours. the time. And, and I, I don't mind it. I'm going to vote for it. I think it's a good thing. I think we're, you know, right there. But but I, I think we owe, you know, it to, to the people in the crowd to come up and no, speak I'm, and I'm, stuff. I'm, I'm here sure. just to answer questions. I, I, I really do. Yeah, one last, last question that was asked by a council person was, what arrangements will you make to uh, try to retain the 
current obligations made by the hotel and conventions. I don't know if you've had those discussions or. Well, you could. I mean, I would. I think the, the current owner also. Uh, I would work with the current owner, with the Hotel Lodging Association, with Scott and his group. You know, as I said, we're working with the brand that we'd be most active with, which is Premier Suites, to talk about a staged renovation, so that you know, the, so that the, the number of units would not be compromised. Number of units would be compromised less as far as numbers, because I know that that was a concern last time that we that we spoke, and so I think that between the hotel association, uh, working with visitors convention, and also working with the brand that we've been speaking to by doing stage renovations, I think that we can hopefully solve the majority of the issues so that those, so the conventions are not lost. Again, your success is something I want to share in, and I think I was hoping, I'm hoping, hopeful that you want to share in the success of this Good Homes community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll just go in order for uh, receipt here. Uh, first is uh, Mike Walton. Each person can come up and uh, state their name and address for the council. We'd appreciate it. Thank you, Mayor. My name is Mike Walton. I live at 63 Roundtable Road, and I'm here representing Springfield Post 32, the American Legion. Uh, we have a, uh, a long history with the Wyndham since its opening back in the 70s when it was the Forum 30, and then it went on to be a Hilton and then a Wyndham. And uh, we've, we used to hold our annual Lincoln Day pilgrimage there where we honored President Abraham Lincoln on his birthday, which we've done for like over 80 years. Uh, we used to have our uh, proceedings at the Wyndham. And it, when it was first opened, when it was Ramada, it was so new that uh, uh, they had to bring the food from the Ramada South downtown. So that's how long that we've had a relationship with this hotel. Back in 1988, after five years of work with folks from the city of Springfield and our American Legion family, which consists of the American Legion, American Legion Auxiliary and Sons of the American Legion, we were able to bring back our annual state conventions to Springfield after a 30-year absence. Since that time, the American Legion conventions, which are normally in July of each year, all three of them at the same time, they've been held in Springfield 23 times, 23 times. The folks at the Convention and Visitors Bureau, the mayors that we've worked with, they've all been really outstanding in helping bring those conventions back to Springfield each July. The best the hotel ever was in my opinion, was when it was a Hilton. As the Hilton and the Marriott have standards that must be met or they don't maintain their status as a Hilton or a Marriott. Unfortunately, this past July, when the conventions were here, we had numerous complaints about the Wyndham, the lack of air conditioning in a lot of rooms, and how it has not been maintained over the years. Presently, we're scheduled to return to Springfield in July of 2023, as we have contracts with the Bank of Springfield Center, the President Abraham Lincoln Doubletree Hotel, and the Wyndham. Now, we don't know if that's going to happen or not now. Uh, we've also been speaking with the folks over at the State House Inn, and they may be able to help us with some of these rooms. But... Uh, we've also tentatively secured Springfield for our state conventions in July of 24. But as I spoke to the mayor the other day, we're not going to sign any contracts until we see what happens, uh, what you folks do tonight, and whether or not we're going to have the rooms here. Uh, it, you know, when we brought that convention back in 88, it had been at the Palmer House in, in Chicago for years and years, and it was like pulling teeth getting that convention out of the city, but we out of that city into Springfield. But, uh, but you know what, we're going to have to make sure we have enough rooms. We need approximately 350 rooms on peak night. All we can get for 23 from the President Abraham Lincoln is 105 because the Wyndham has already booked us for the others, but that might not be available, as we know. We're going to need the Wyndham to have a minimum of 150 rooms available for us to continue to bring those statewide conventions to Springfield. 
or if we don't and we, we have to shuttle, we're going to incur very expensive shuttle costs for our attendees. With our demographics, a lot of our attendees won't be able to walk from the state house in to the convention center. They just can't do it. But, uh, and a shuttle is very expensive anymore. I know that this year, our national convention was in Milwaukee, and that's for the entire American Legion family across the country. Our shuttle costs there were $220,000 that we had to come up with to get our folks to that convention center. Um, our American Legion family convention attendees love Springfield. They love coming here because the people of Springfield open their arms to them. And uh, we, we think we bring a good, strong economic impact to the city, but we can't do that without decent and adequate hotel rooms. So uh, I'm asking you if you, uh, if you do confirm this, uh, we, we're going to need at least 150 rooms or find another spot to have the convention. <coughs> Thank you for your time. And I can answer any questions if anybody has any of them. Any questions? Chief, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. What do you do? Chief. Next is uh, Don Craven. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Don Craven, 1005 North 7th. Um, focusing on something that everybody else has said as they were standing here at this podium, he, this has been here two or three times. And the, my point tonight is that you have rules about how many times you can consider these things. And in July, you denied this variance request. And in August, you denied it again on reconsideration. Under your ordinances, after final action on any application for a variance by the commission or the city council, another application requesting the same relief shall not be accepted or considered by the commission or city council for a period of 18 months after such action unless the applicant shows that there has been a substantial change in circumstances since such action, 155.212A. You then go on, your rule is not mine, you then go on to define requesting the same relief. What does that mean? And what that means is you're requesting a variance from the same provision or combination of provisions of the zoning code for the same premises sought in such prior petition. If you look at these variance requests, the first one is, was 2022-034, and if you look at 2022-050, the requests are the same. You don't have, in my opinion, and I know that Mr. Zirkel will disagree with me, in my opinion, you don't have the authority to grant this request. Uh, and if I'm right, Joe could have stayed home and celebrated his wedding anniversary. Um, so I would humbly ask that you deny this simply because you don't have the authority to grant it under your ordinances. I yield my time. Thank you. Corporation Council, would you like to? Uh, <clears throat> well, just briefly, this, uh, as Don pointed out, uh, Mr. Craven pointed out, uh, there is a difference of opinion. It's very clear that the uh, ordinance he references refers to requesting the same relief. Uh, the request for the initial petition uh, requested to cease the hotel operation, cease the convention operation, and convert to 400 apartments. Then the next request related to maintaining the hotel, 125 rooms, and then requesting 275 apartments. So in the view of Corporation Council's office, that is a different request, not the same request. And density is a measure of either a, a certain uh, volume, a certain uh, number against a certain volume, or square footage. Our density ordinance relates to so many units per square footage. The original request for was one unit for each 125 square feet. This request is for 
one unit for each 185 square feet. Very significant difference in density. So I'm very confident that the City Council has jurisdiction because that's what we're talking about is jurisdiction to make a decision. And that would be up to a court to decide. It's not something that the Council's really equipped to vote on. I'm well aware of that, but the yes. Council hasn't voted yet, and we'll, we'll see if that will be necessary. But leading to the question, Mr. Zirkle, if this is denied and they come back next week, because they waited all of a week to file after the last denials, if they come back next week and they reduce it by five, is that a, is that a, is that a significant change? Well, you're asking change? to speculate. No, I mean, and no, you're asking to speculate, and that's a little bit of a, if, for example, let's get back to this. If they could do only 200, they wouldn't need a zoning request. So they originally asked for an additional 200, up to 400. They've then reduced that from 200 additional to 75 additional. That is a significant different request. And under your ordinance, the significant, the, that, that determination of a significant change in circumstances is to be made, is to be presented to and made by the Zoning Commission, and no such presentation was made. And, and you're, you're, again, I don't want to uh, confuse the issue this evening, but you know as well as I do, the ordinance says if you make the same request, you then look at change circumstances. If it's not the same request, then that section does not apply. They are asking for precisely the same zoning relief from the, and the same variance from the same provision in the ordinance in one and two. We're going to disagree, Jim. That's fine. Uh, Understood. Point made. Thank yes. you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, Alderman Hanauer. Yeah, real, real quick. I think the original... The original ordinance that spawned this was a result of a Walmart that was trying to be built out in, it was either um, Mathers Gun Club Road or over by Cobblestone. I'm not quite sure which one. Cobblestone. And my, what I, the research I did, they kept coming back. And so, and I believe it was Bruce Strom, could have been, I don't know, before Bruce or it was Bruce, that, that, set it up so that you can't come back it what you know you change the square footage a little bit and they just they just come right back and that was th that's why I was kind of shocked that this was able to come back because it's it, it, it's it goes against what that ordinance was made for and so a good example is if it, it, when when we had the health and housing so if that would have been voted down they could have they could have changed you know, a couple square foot on the bottom floor or something and brought it right back to next month and we would have done it. It's no different. And I don't think, I, I, I agree to a certain extent that, you know, um, the number of rooms in that, but, but I'm afraid we're opening up Pandora's box. Why do we even have that ordinance? And, and I guess what I'm asking for is I want something to strengthen that ordinance. The definite, uh, better definitions. I don't care what it takes, but I think we need to strengthen that ordinance to where this kind of stuff doesn't happen again. We have rules, and, and if that's what we have to do, uh, then I'm willing to work with, with you, Jim, or, or, you know, to try to, try to, try to get some, some more um, clarity to, to this and, and to try to kind of, you know, stop this stuff. Because otherwise... We all could be dealing with the, with the same thing over and over and over again, uh, a tavern or or you know they don't want to, you know it could be anything. So I just request that we we look at something to to strengthen that. Just very briefly, my memory uh, and it could be mistaken was the ordinance was originally adopted I think when there was a request for a residential unit above a garage, and I think it came back. Uh, or was asked to be back, I think, a couple of times, and then the council adopted the, uh, it was a variance to allow residents over a garage in a residential area. And so, the, ironically, the ordinance has been in place for uh, several decades, quite a while. The only other time the issues really kind of come up was with the Washington Street apartments, 
And we looked at that very closely because in that case, for example, Mr. Craven, they had asked for a variance to allow 73 parking spaces to accommodate the uh, Washington Street apartments. But when they came back the second time, they asked for the same 73 but was putting the off-site parking elsewhere. So they were asking for the same 73 both times. We looked at that very closely. And in a generic way, um, I think having perhaps a definition of what constitutes the same request, the difficulty here is they're not requesting a zoning classification. They're requesting a variance of density. So when you look at the, the mathematical uh, relationship of density and the request, the difference between 125 square feet per unit versus 185 square feet is a very substantial percentage difference in request of density. And if it were a matter of 1 or 2%, I think you could make a better argument that that uh, is really the same request since it's so substantially close. But this represents the difference between 400, in other words, 200 new units, down to 75 is a very significant change in density. So for us to say that that's the same request could expose the city to exactly the opposite argument, which is, no, it's not the same request, so we want to file legal action to say you misinterpreted the ordinance, because it is a different request. It's not the same request. And so I think some, when it comes to density, that's where there's a little bit of a judgment call because it's not the same as asking for an S1 or an S2 because that's very definitive. Either you ask for it or you don't. But when you ask for the calculation of density, then you're getting into looking at actually what they're asking for, if that helps. And having some kind of a percentage rule on that I think would be fine. Okay, thank you. If I might, Mr. Mayor. Sure. And on then the Alderman McMinimum and Alderman Conley. On the I Washington think he's Street. Make my point. On okay. the Washington Street project, this this <laughs> ordinance, the ordinance that we're talking about on, on the 18 month rule, applies to a request for the same variance on the same premises. That's what we have here. Same variance on the same premises. On Washington Street, when we came when when that when that developer came back the second time. He purchased, if you will remember, first time it was just the apartment complex. The second time, he purchased the adjoining daycare, uh, and and reconfigured that that project. And it was not, it was not the same premises, which is why that one was allowed to go move forward. Wasn't it withdrawn? If I could, can I just? Oh, we have to go in order. All right. But uh, since we're offering opinions, right? This is your opinion, Corporation Council's opinion. I'm going to offer my opinion, and when they brought, they already filed the petition. And Al Rajavi, or I can't remember if it was David Mitchell, one of them said, hey, Mayor, we're going to convert the entire Wyndham into apartments and get rid of the convention space. I said, uh, no, that's not going to happen. And so that is a vast difference. I go by what was submitted in the original plan. And that's just a common person's view of things. So originally they wanted to build it out, just like the developer said, all apartments. Now we have the Second request come, and that it was amended, by the way, by the commission, but the original submission was all apartments. No convention space, no hotels, nothing. And what they've submitted is vastly different when you say they are adding convention space and hotel space, or they're reducing the number of apartments, however you want to look at it. Point being, they're asking for the same variances on the same premises. But the variances are substantially different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right. You gotta go to the, number, the number of apartments. I didn't draft the ordinance, Jim. I understand, and that's why I'm in the best position to <laughs> give a comment <laughs> on what it means. <laughs> well, you might have the opportunity to raise your right hand and testify about Woo! that, Mr. Zirkel. <laughs> thank you very much. Alderman McMinimum. Well, thank you, Corporation Council. You know, this is a different request for relief, and let's look at what happened at the Zoning Commission, that different amount of relief requested. They downsized the relief from 400 rooms down to 275 and it created different 
voting result at the, at the Zoning Commission. It was uh, the first time it got there was four votes yes, but the second time it went back it was six votes yes. So I think the different amount of relief, the change of relief being requested impacted the vote. And we got to recognize that, not speculate about what would happen next time. We got, these are the facts we got to work with. Um, there was a significant change of relief being requested. Those are the facts that we have here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Next is uh, Justin Reichert. Good evening. Um, I'm Justin Reichert. I am the general counsel for the Bank of Springfield Center. Uh, I submitted our request to speak at the same time, so I assume my coffee is next. So I'll have you him want stand it. up with me. Um, I'm going to be careful about not repeating a lot of things that were said. I agree with everything that Don Craven said. I submitted my legal opinion. If I can ask Corporation Counsel, I submitted a letter to the Zoning Commission. Uh, I want to make sure that letter is still part of the record. So this is just to be sure that we have created the record. I also submitted that letter with the signature of Darren Dame from Springfield Hotel and uh, Lodging Association. And they have submitted a letter that I think got to all of the council members. I wanted to make sure that's also part of the record. Is that the case, Did council? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we'll any, anything, part of it. Uh, I'm going to say anything that was submitted, you know, through the zoning process is part of the record, certainly. I don't know specifically that was submitted through zoning or submitted su directly to the if city council If it was submitted members. to the uh, city council or uh, uh, submitted to the clerk, then it's part of the record. So we'll make it part of the record? Yep. We'll make it part of the record. We will. No, Thank I, you. I just have not seen it, so I appreciate I don't, that. I, we, it certainly yeah, if you don't have a copy for some reason, I'll get it to you yeah. before we leave here. So just a few things. Again, I, I agree with everything Don Craven said in, in my read of this again. And, and I think that there is some common sense to trying to avoid a constant ro you know, rotating door of, of shopping for the right number. And, and so, well, well I, certainly, I, I certainly respect Mr. Zirkel's opinion. I, I, I think that there has to be some level of common sense applied here. This obviously is here the third time. It obviously has already created that revolving door. And a week later, we go for a new number. A week later, we go for a new number. Um, we get it that they could switch over to 200 departments right now without needing anybody's permission. It wouldn't matter what we say or what anybody here says. Um, that would that would be unfortunate for us in our convention business. Um, even if even if 200 switches out, it would be unfortunate for us. Um, if the full 275 switches out, and if we're really just talking about that difference of 275, that is still a big difference for us. And so, you know. I spoke to the general manager yesterday. We had our board meeting yesterday afternoon, and she indicated to me that the Principals Association, who has had their convention in our building yesterday and today, um, was already had already been speaking to us about a 2028 contract. And as of the general manager reporting to me yesterday, they are not going to sign a 2028 contract with us. That the effect of what is happening right here is exactly the reason why they're not doing that now. They want to see what happens here. As you heard from Mike Walton, there are concerns. You know, so we have multiple examples of situations where we're running into a problem attracting conventions that are large, nice conventions bringing sales tax to downtown. So that is happening to us already, just waiting for this vote. So I think it's. I, I don't think we can say anymore that there's speculation about whether tourism is going to be harmed downtown. It is going to be when we lose those rooms. Um, the general manager also relayed to me that at various points, you know, we, we can take 8,000 plus people into an event, depending upon the type of event and how we do our seating. So we can attract significant numbers of people into town, conventions or concerts or whatever else it may be. Um, we have times that pass where the general manager says that representatives from Wyndham have said they would propose holding 300 to 325 rooms for some of these large events for us. So again, we're already in, those aren't, those aren't what we made up. Those are what have been proposed or spoken to from the Wyndham to us about what they should hold for, for some of our events. So when we talk about going down to 125 rooms, we're well, well below, more than double below what the Wyndham has communicated to us at times they might save for us. Um, 
So again, that's very problematic. The last thing that I'll say, um, unless my chairman tells me to speak again, is that uh, your staffing, your staff has heard this three times now, and, and all three times is recommended denial um, based upon the three criteria that they have to meet that, that the type of, the structure of this premises can, can actually handle this type of business, that nothing unique has occurred, and that you know, it might violate, uh, and I think a big concern was density and the traffic. And so your, your expert staff, um, you don't have to rely on any of us speaking out here, your staff has denied those three criteria on all three criteria every time. So, you know, again, while I think we hold that there is a legal problem with you hearing this and deciding it on in the first place, maybe save for another day, maybe not, um, we think there is also a legal problem with completely rejecting those three criteria and moving beyond that with the variance, especially in light of, of the expert, you know, work and testimony that your, your professional staff have given. Um, Mr. Mayor, I believe that Mr. Coffey is next. Right. I'll just step aside mm -hmm. and let him speak. And just for the record, I confirmed, or Matt Glothen can confirm, uh, regional planning staff, Sangamon County Regional Planning staff has uh, made two recommendations on this project. Okay, thank you for the correction. Mm -hmm. Two recommendations mm -hmm. for denial on all three counts. Well, one thing we can agree on is that older men and women should get paid more, that's for sure. I, I've determined <laughs> that tonight. Uh, I got involved with the project, you know, late in July because I believe that the Bank of Springfield Center is pretty much the cornerstone of tourism here because it's the facility that all the conventions can go to. We've got 65,000 square feet. Uh, and in order for the hotels to uh, uh, generate the business, they need the convention center. Uh, was asked for our official position. So at our July meeting, July 25th, you know, all 11 board members went through the pros, the cons, what could, we, what may not happen. And it was unanimous, 11-0, uh, that we are against this. And the reason is, is we've got to have the hotel rooms. And I know a lot of people want to have downtown housing, and I, I think that's great. Um, but not in this area. We're spending millions and millions of dollars on an intermodal transportation system. We've got Legacy Point. All of this is designed to increase tourism. But yet, then we're going to go around and allow a major hotel chain to go. You know, the whole idea was people come on the train, they do business with the city, they do business with the state, business with the county, Horace Mann, uh, everyone. They're right there. They go to one facility. Our biggest... Well, number one, Scott Dahl has done a phenomenal job. So for, for anybody that questions what Scott Dahl's done after COVID is completely wrong, he's done a phenomenal job. But our biggest selling point compared to Peoria, Bloomington, and Champaign is that we do have those two hotels and we have the convention center all in one spot. And so it's, it's absolutely vital that we have this. I've heard all the doom and gloom stories. You know, we've, when this started out two hours ago, it's, Zero hotel rooms or 125. How do we know that? The Renaissance went, went under. They, they went into receivership. Another person bought it. We've got a hotel that's working. This existing facility uh, went under. Another hotel person bought it. Now, that hotel person, being from out of town, uh, probably overpaid, didn't uh, put the financial resources into the project, it's a poorly run facility, so that's why we're in this today. It's not Scott Dahl and the tourism that have brought his occupancy to 25%. It's the job that they're doing. So I think you've got to take all this into consideration. And then when you get into, we've now got another developer from New York with his Chicago survey, and I, they can't give you the right answers. Is it 380? Is it 320? Is, is it going to be a Marriott residence, which is what... I was told originally with 150 rooms, the scale just keeps moving and moving and moving. So, you know, not, not wanting to go alone, we got with the Growth Alliance. Now, the Growth Alliance, you know, I'm looking, represents Hanson Engineering, Horace Mann, Springfield Electric, Bunomatic, Memorial Hospital, those type of the biggest and best businesses that we've got in this town. And do you know what all those people said? No, we don't want it. The Convention Center Board. 11 member board said, no, we don't want it. Springfield Hotel Motel Association, they got together. They said, no, we don't want it. So I think it really comes down, do you trust the locals and what they believe about the project 
or do you trust the guy from Houston, the guy from New York, to know what's best for Springfield and what will work in Springfield? I have no doubt this gentleman is very well-intentioned, but in all of our meetings, it really came down, they don't understand the market here. And that's what happened to the existing owner. We think that's what will happen to this owner. And without any information, we think it'll just be long and drawn out. So we decided we think we should let the market decide and see what happens. The city can always come in with a new project, but most of the board members were taken aback by the threats and the aggressive nature of how to make the decision. And uh, we decided you know, we were against it. That's it. So we would ask you basically to vote with what your constituents here said. The great businesses in Springfield that are here to stay, they've got more investing in Springfield than they ever will. So we'd hope that you'd vote with us. That's all. You got any questions? Any questions? Yes. So, sir. Um, Alderman Williams. I'm sorry. That's right. Yeah. So do, um, did they have a solution? The current situation, the owner came in here, pretty much said, I'm broke. I'm hearing about bed bugs and how horrible it is over there. And no one is addressing that. Okay. That we're not addressing that. Okay, so we keep what we got, or maybe he does just do 200 hotels. I don't know. Either way, what happened to our reputation we was talking about earlier? Uh, that Scott Dell kept reputation, reputation. We're getting a bad reputation for having a bad hotel that we don't want to do the New York thing. Okay, that's fine. What did your board tell you we should be doing? Now? Well, we're not in the position to decide that, but what we have said is we've got to see what happens. Supposedly, well, one minute, so now you're saying the owner's broke. One minute he had a lot of money and this. This guy's got 23 projects, you know, so if he doesn't get this one, he's going to the next one. You know, so you'll have to see. I, You know, I've talked to the mayor several times. I think the convention center, the city, the county, the growth alliance, uh, once this all, you know, filters out, we need to get together and figure out what we're going to do. But if the city's going to throw in money, it should be on a project that the city decides they want and go out and do an RFP or request for proposal for something that we want, not put a Band-Aid on when people from out of town threaten us will happen if we don't do what they want. And that is, that it really put a sour taste, I think it put a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths here. I know a lot of older people felt the same way, and a lot of people everywhere they went and talked put a sour taste in all their, that's why so many people have come out against it. Yeah, so so I really didn't hear a solution, but. Well, there's there's, but, there's a multiple solutions, but you, you really can't negotiate out in the public. Let's, let's say this owner, uh, the current owner, doesn't have any money, all right? It goes back to the bank. The bank is not gonna just let it go dark. They're gonna put it in receivership, they'll put somebody in to manage it. Then, after they get tired of losing money, they'll, they'll wanna sell it again. Maybe the city, the county, and the convention center can come in and buy it and put together a bigger, bigger better project. I think Scott Dahl will tell you that one of the most important things we need, we could use another 100,000 square feet of convention space in this town to really benefit the town, really generate jobs, money, and construction. But what they're doing is they're saying, you gotta get this down, We've got to do this now. The truth is, you know, they gave you all the construction numbers and all that. We don't need the construction in Sangamon County. We don't have the workers to do it. We need this delayed a year for when they're so to have another project because there's so much work in Sangamon County. If you ask the unions and all that, they can't fill up their union halls. So, I mean, there's a multiple solution. It's not easy. I am not telling you, Alderman, at all that this is an easy solution. There's no number one winning answer. But to put a band aid on this project and just do what they want and maybe it doesn't work out. And then if he's really got 23, they sell him to a REIT. They get up in New York City, it all goes down the tubes and we've got an atomic bomb dropped on downtown Springfield that you guys will all have to deal with. He'll be gone. Yeah, so, so my final question was, so what, what kind of timeline in your mind or your board? Well, I, I, mind? Uh, uh, because cause say this fails, say we, we, okay. we take your recommendation, it doesn't pass. What kind of timeline in your mind should <clears throat> things happen or do we just keep running a crummy part of a Hotel. Well, first off, we're not doing it. The existing owner's running a crummy hotel. Well, so well but still, yeah. he tried to do something about it, right? Who did? He, he did, the current owner. He's trying to sell it, right? He's trying to sell it. Okay, so that's that's. And the market action. will determine what it sells for, and until that, we don't know. But it's, you know, if he thinks it's going to sell for $15 million, it's not going to. So you'll have to let the market decide. And there are people out there. There are hotel people out there that are interested, but not at an outrageous price. You know, basically, when you pass this, 
you are going to bail out an out-of-town owner that didn't put the investment in, that overpaid, and make them a lot of money. That's what you're going to do when you vote for it. So what we're saying is let's draw back, say no, let's see what happens, and then collectively as a community we can come back together and figure out what the right solution is for Springfield. And that's, that, that's kind of where we were at. Okay. Thank Alderman you. Alderman McMinima. Yeah, well, thanks for coming tonight here, Mike. I know, you know, the convention center's got its own problems that pre-exist this, but what I would like to say is... Like what are those problems? <laughs> well, I won't go into them because it might upset you. I mean, whether it be... Um, <laughs> you, mean, you mean the only thing to get remodeled in downtown in the last 10 years? Well, you years, had to, I you know, guess. sell the naming rights. You had, uh, you know, a minor disaster with the uh, U of I basketball team and some other issues like that. But um, you asked <laughs> okay. me to get into that, but I didn't mean Go to. Go ahead. You, but you you're saying we want. might have a, a time, uh, a, um, some kind of bomb on our hands. We've already got a bomb on our hands with this situation. This would be a bigger one. And uh, so something is better than nothing is the way I look at it. And, you know, all your buddies out there that say we should, you know, deny this zoning, where were they four years ago when they could have bought the the hotel, you know, I didn't, well, I, you, they, actually, so they didn't come up, they didn't come up and they didn't buy it back then, they didn't buy it back then, so now you're saying let's take another chance and hope that the, the good guys will buy it next time. That's a big risk, a big gamble. I think we got something here, a guy, a big this, this a guy, big this guy has got successful projects around the country, right, mm -hmm. and he's got around financing the around the country, and you're trying to dismiss all that and say oh. we're going to get a better deal. I think what's going to happen is that when the current owner you know, we, we foreclose on him and, and collect the $1.5 million that he owes the city, and he shuts down the hotel. What happens to our reputation then, Mike, and, you, and, and the convention center? You, when when nobody, nobody's going to want to do a convention with us because the hotel just closed down. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to want to do a convention with us. Then where are we at? Something is better than nothing. One in the hand is better than four in the bush. Where are so we? So that's that where I'm at. Happen. You just assume that's going to happen. Do you have? You said there's no crystal balls. Now you're looking into a crystal ball and telling me what's well, going to happen. Everybody is. I mean, yeah. you were too. I, a, absolutely. Yeah. We're just playing yeah, the odds. Let's Mike, be I clear. Agree. Yeah. The only threat made was the current owner, and what he said is he has financing for 200 subsidized units of housing. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, he so said he, he shut down the hotel the, side. Uh, other and let's be counts. pretty clear how the pandemic hurt your business at the convention center. It, the pandemic hurt everyone, correct. but it's not our correct. obligation to bail That is out. correct. Now, everybody seems to glide past that like it didn't happen. I'm going to ask Alderman, former Alderman Proctor to come forward because he was up here and then he was actually at the window. So he could speak specifically to what happened because yeah, Mr. No Rajabi's intent, he loved the hotel. He was going to remodel it. Then the pandemic hit. See, we were talking to him about targeted tiff and pace back in 2019. Pandemic hits, blows everybody's doors off. He keeps it open, and it oozes money. He continues to pay, losing money, runs up the utility bill. And he says, I have the cash to pay it. Actually, uh, he, we talked to him today. He was going to send a wire. I checked with Doug Brown. I don't know. There was no confirmation yet. But he intended to pay the $1.5 million, so it wouldn't be an issue. And most importantly, the reason he did that is to get rid of this uh, fantasy that he's not going to hold on to the hotel because that's what's talked about that will oh he won't be able to pay the utility it's going to hit the wall it'll be three million dollars and by the way we scott Dahl had asked the owner across the street to buy it for eight million and he said he wouldn't do it so here's a guy that's invested nine million dollars that i know of and he says he's not going to let it go but i'd ask uh andrew proctor to come forward and speak about the experience with the Wyndham and the whole process from the start of the ownership <laughs> to where we are at today, from your perspective. Okay, well, I actually, think you all, you all know me. Oh, sorry, Alderman McConley. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I just, um, yep. and actually, uh, no, um, Andrew, good to see you, hi. Hi, how you doing? Um, good to see you again. And too. I'm going to throw this out at you so you can throw, you can sum it up with everything else you're saying. Um, can you please let us know how much... Um, the owner of the hotel got in PPP during the pandemic? I don't know that answer for it. But he did get money, didn't he? I don't have that answer for okay, it. Okay, well, I can Google it and find it again, but Fine. it's not, the doors were kept open, but the, the federal government provided significant funds to a number of businesses, including this, the Wyndham, to s help subsidize that. So I, I think we need to be careful that we're not making this a zero sum yes, game. I think it was hundreds of thousands, it wasn't millions of dollars. It was a lot of money. Well, how much was I that? Make a, I'll Google it. And yeah, please do. I make a point to that. And 
I love you all. I really do. <laughs> I really do. And I hope you all know that. I hope you do. And, but the PPP money, it's not like it went into Al's pocket. It went into the, the workers of the hotel that stayed. And it went into the hotel. Not, it, it went into what, legally how it was supposed to be spent. That's how it was spent. To retain as many employees as possible at the hotel to keep it functional throughout the pandemic. And that's what we did. Right, and, and I guess my point to that was is that we're, the, this case is being made that the hotel was kept open and functional. It was. But it wasn't completely without tax dollar subsidies to keep those doors open and to keep those people paid. I'm not arguing that that was a bad decision. Right. I'm right. just saying that that's the reality of what did also happen. Completely right. As, as we needed. I mean, our whole country needed that. Yeah, so I'm exactly. not. So I, um, I think, you, again, I would reconfess my love for you all. Um, <laughs> I think you know when I sat in that chair, I did not come from a position of threats or anything like that. It was all about analytical thought and the facts when I made my decisions on certain cases and stuff. So when I hope it comes from me, you don't see it as a threat, but see it as an analytical fact, an option of what is with this building. Um, th there's nothing, you know, it's interesting that all these hypotheticals get thrown out and basically what you just heard from some of these members of the convention center boards, you want, they want the business to fail. They want downtown to fail. So then it can be kind of rebuilt in, in their way. It, unfortunately, the, the only options available right now for this property are what Al told you. He can, see, he can no longer seek, get the financing to do a full box hotel that he wanted to do. When I first met the man, oh, three years ago now, it seems like forever, there was grand plans for a Delta by Marriott four-star hotel to come in. It was all everything was lying up to do it everything was locked and loaded and then COVID hit and just destroyed the whole world destroyed this project destroyed what he wanted to do the only reason why we're here again for a third time is because his heart is too good that he doesn't think that having government assist housing would be a best use for this building but that is the only other option before him because it will not be sold it will not go under receivership you know as much as the doom and gloom wants you to believe that it will it won't and yes, the utility bill was paid today. I got the, the picture on my phone of the wire transfer confirmed, 1.5 million, whatever it was. So that's no longer a factor. So in, in closing, I'm a little nervous because it's kind of hard being on this side when I've been on that side and, and knowing that we've been here for so long that we all love Springfield. We wouldn't be here with... A, you guys wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have been in that seat for six years if I did love Springfield. Sorry I had to leave. Family decision, family thing. But oh, miss. the best use and the continued use for the structure is for what Mr. Mitchell's proposing. It solves two issues. It helps keep some conventions, granted not all, but it'll keep as many as you can and provide additional housing for downtown Springfield, which as Alderman for six years, that was one of the number one questions I was asked. Where can I live downtown? I want to live downtown. Where can I do it? And I kept ringing off the same options, full, 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 full. And when this went down the first time, there, there was a number, I saw, I monitored the Facebook and stuff, and I saw a number of people saying, I would have liked to have lived downtown in Wyndham. I would have liked to have had that experience. There's a lot of single people that don't have houses right now. And if you've seen the way the housing market right now is right now and how much mortgage rates are, they're not gonna be able to get houses for a while until these mortgage rates go down. And especially with the way the cost of housing is right now. So we're all entering a new post-COVID environment that I do believe, based on my past six years as all of representing downtown, that the need will be there. And you can only imagine, like when, when we were having the hotel during legislative session, we had a lot of people asking for housing for downtown because it was part of their job. They didn't want to go to the hotel every single different week. They wanted something stable, something that they could stay for, for call their Springfield home for six months or whatever. The need's there. I truly do believe it, and I, I wouldn't be here if I didn't believe it. And um, <laughs> everything that these gentlemen just said, regarding the dysfunction of the hotel is an insult to the staff that's currently there. The staff is what makes that hotel function right now, not the condition of the hotel. 
So I, I hope you take that in consideration as you vote tonight. I know it's very difficult. I know it's very rough on this one. But I hope we'd all look for the future, positive future, rather than wait to see what option C might be that who knows what it could be. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, how many more speakers do we have? Uh, that's all that signed up. Where are we at with this? It was the motion. Let's call the question. Discussion. I mean, it was I'll allow, uh, we have a couple in the audience, uh, Karen Khan, I don't know, Darren Dame, and then uh, Teresa, if you want to say anything. But that'd be, probably be it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and City Council. I stand before you as president of the NAACP. In 2007, we struggled getting hotel rooms to hold our state convention here for the 100th commemoration of the 1908 race riots. I have spent several times in Washington, D.C., planning for the 1908 race riot monument here in Springfield. We're also looking at holding our national convention here in Springfield between 2025 and 2030. The problem in the past has been is we don't have 10,000 hotel nights. We're looking at being in Springfield seven to 10 days. I would hate for us to have to go outside of Springfield because we sold one of the oldest, one of the boldest, one of the tallest hotels in Springfield. I believe that this is a hotel that can be saved and the NAACP asks that you leave the hotel a hotel. Thank you for your time. I don't know if anybody else wished to come up. Very good. Is there any other discussion? I think Darren. Oh, Darren? Yeah. Sure. You can come up. Come on up. Might as well. That's not me. Excuse me. I know it's been a, a long day for everyone here. So, uh, Darren Dame, I'm representing our Springfield Hotel and Lodging Association. Um, and our I mean, the address that if I can give is our 3921 South MacArthur Boulevard. So, um, just a couple of things that I wanted to say and remark from the hotel side of it. And, and again, we're, we're, this is a decision that the council has to make. But back when, we, um, when Scott Dahl was, was brought on, and I think Mayor, I think our association was one of those brought that on twice. We, we really uh, pushed for him to be there. We were really focused on bringing conventions into the city. Our city has run 55% occupancy for years and years. We had a couple of years when the museum come on that our occupancy increased. Uh, and we were striving to get that 60%. We even wore buttons, I think, that had 60% occupancy. But that's how we're going to, that was where we were going. And, and we were getting there. But that's how we bring in development when we start bringing engines in. And, and we, I think I, I sent all around to all the council members what our industry is about and, and, and where we strive to. And, and conventions are one of the top things that we look for. Another thing I want to, uh, just a couple of things I want to kind of point out to you. Um, the Wyndham said they've run 27% occupancy. So if you take that at 30, 365 rooms, that's 102 rooms per night averaging. So just take that into effect. The other thing is, uh, Mike's exactly accurate. The Doubletree was definitely uh, in receivership. A new owner came in and turned that thing around where somebody came in and paid them cash for it. So that's another thing. The third thing we need to think about is that as a city, we are going to be bringing in a potential of 1,200 room nights per night on a Friday and Saturday night with this Shields Sports Park. Where are we going to put these individuals? Are we going to let them go to another town, or are we going to house them here in Springfield? So those are the only three, three things I have to say. So thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Darren. I guess if you could. Uh shed some light because you're a hotel owner yes uh, can your hotel can you operate at a third I mean throughout the year if you just had a third occupancy throughout the entire year because uh, with the Wyndham it's an antiquated system you know the heating and air they uh, spend about a hundred thousand dollars or over a hundred thousand dollars a month on utilities just the usage and it's just eating them up alive where that type of occupancy is not cutting it and I agree I, and I feel Sorry for Al, and I feel sorry for actually all of our large hotels. Our, our utility bills, when it comes to uh, hotels, are twice as high as our competitors in other cities. Yes, and you, and you are correct. 
So the other thing, no, you cannot make the it other at 33%. thing, uh, and I'm just stating the facts. What's uh, because if this goes down, uh, you know, we have to be prepared to. I'm not prepared to shut it down. Yeah. I don't know. You know, I heard everybody come up here, so I hope they're all ready to ante up because Al uh, had offered. Hey, does the city want to buy the hotel? And uh, you know, we got the Y block, we got the beach house. I don't think we want to add a hotel to it. But uh, anyway, with regards to that. Um, on the uh, hotel side of things, what do you think needs to be done with regards to that? You know, that he doesn't want to operate the hotel side. Mm -hmm. So what are the options? The options on the hotel side? Mm -hmm. um, well, first of all, and, and I agree, it, it, the TripAdvisor, it does have a lot of, uh, of issues. Um, it, it, it's got a lot of potential, but it has a lot of issues. It, it, needs, it needs a brand name on it, and it needs uh, good management. I mean, that's just my, that's my right. two cents right. as, a, as, a, as a business owner. So uh, what's the ability to find that type of person? What's the ability to find? Yeah, because uh, Scott Dahl just asked, he asked the owners across the street, and he can come up and correct me if I'm wrong, but he asked if they'd buy it, and uh, they said, well, if we had $25 million to invest, we'd build a hotel. We wouldn't invest it in the Wyndham. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and again, as, as a business person, you have to take a look and see uh, at that hotel, you know, is, is it better to, uh, to tear it down? Is it better to, nope. to, to build it up? And then you, you, I mean, you just bring it down and you build up another one? I, I don't no, we're know. we're not tearing that down. Unless somebody, anybody in the audience wanted to tear down the window? No. I mean, it's iconic. Yeah. I mean, we're, Route 66 is being reborn. I mean... The nostalgia of everything. So, but yeah. Yep. So, oh, no, we'll on. wait Let's until the end. On. So, thank Let's you. Wait. Appreciate Let's it. Go. Any other discussion amongst the? Any other discussion among the uh, council members? Yeah, I just want to say so. Um, Darren. Uh, Darren, uh, you're the association Hotel. president or Hotel. Yeah, Hotel. owner. Okay. So, no solution. That's mine. Yeah. I mean, this is one of <laughs> your mine. fellow hotel people. Roy. I'm can you put the can you put the uh, mic whatever, down? your hotel hotel I members I guess or whatever were, were, you know have told us he's in distress and he's trying to sell and he's trying to do this and it's almost like everybody else uh, is saying well you just got to operate you know losing money um when he's trying to help us find a fix for it so I'm asking you would you do that would, would you yourself run a hotel at the rate he's running it at and the same thing and nothing changes? Or do, would you, do you got some kind of timeline or solution on what to do if, when this fails? I'm not sure I really want to answer that. The, yeah, see, because, but that's the problem. Well, Nobody here, wants to here's face. The, here's the issue, though, is, uh, first of all, uh, if I was going to purchase it, I would have probably... Have, I know the pandemic was hard, and it was hard on, on, on everybody in the hotel business. Any type of event business, it was tough. But, you know, they had a pro forma when they first uh, bought the place. Those are some issues that they had to take and, and look at. And, and I think that with what they did, if they had made some little bit better choices, it might have changed the difference. That's the only thing. I, I, I'm not in their shoes, but from what everything I'm hearing is that hotel could run much better. Do you think it still could? Yes. It can, it can run, but does it, the <laughs> condition of it? Well, that's the thing is you got to, I mean, to build something like that, I mean, if you were to build that many rooms, you're probably looking at 150000 per unit. So you do the math, I mean, you're, you can figure out. So, yes, the building, if it, if, if it could be renovated the right way, you put the right name on it, yes, it can do very well. Doubletree has proved that. There's enough occupancy in Springfield to make it work. Appreciate you. Director Dell. Mayor, I just want to clarify that yeah, the uh, Double Tree said they would be interested at the right price. Initially, they were not because the price wasn't there or a price that they could even consider at that point. So, just to clarify, they said for the right price. So, I think that's in any case, right? Anybody's going to buy something for the right price. Just a clarification. Do you know what the right price is? <laughs> <laughs> you opened that one. I'm going to check, Mayor. <laughs> I think Zero I do in my count. mind. I'm not for sure if it is the right price, but yeah, I think uh, I think the industry would have a a, a price point in, in mind. What can we that. spend ARP money on? 
though. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not sure we want to own it. I, right. I'll just say that. Thank yeah. you. Okay. So any other discussion with council members? Mayor, real quick. Yeah, Alderman Hanauer. Um, we've been at it for three and three hours and 20 minutes. Uh, do we have, uh, should we get a motion and uh, are we going to, are we just going to let this, what, what are we doing here? Because I think it's, oh, that's it, right. it, was on the discussion. it was on discussion. So long ago, I forgot. There needs to be a motion. I don't, I don't, I'll. Is there a motion on? I'll leave it up discussed? to the alderwoman uh, for, for Ward 5 if it's in her ward. Yeah. What'd you say? Mm hmm I make a motion that we deny the petition as submitted. Second. Second. Is there a discussion on the denial? Is there any willingness yeah, to I'll amend? Take, I'll, I'll take a shot at this. What's that? Alderman McMinimum? Well, I think when this goes from bad to worse, we got to look to see how people voted. And I respect the mayor for bringing this back three times. Um, I think we're going to see some really bad stuff happen here. And I'll be looking at some of the people who spoke tonight, and I'll be very vocal about it. Who pushed for the no vote on this, and who voted no? So I guess we're going to say, uh, Alderman Purchase is saying, vote yes to deny. So I'll be looking at who the, where the yes votes are and who pushed for that, because that's the motion that was seconded, to vote yes to deny this opportunity to invest tens of million of dollars into uh, the hotel and keep it partly a hotel instead of it going from bad. The, the current owner has said he's going to put in subsidized housing, 200 units of subsidized housing and zero hotel. So, um, Mr. Coffee, oh, that's going to be some rough, rough coffee for uh, the convention center to, to drink. Alderman Hanauer, then Alderman Gregory, and then I'm, Alderman I'm, Purchase. I just want to bring up, that's the kind of attitude that we've, we've gotten throughout this whole process. Um, intimidation towards, towards people that have been against this. They voice their opinion, and, and they get voicemails on, on, their, on their machines. They, he, there's intimidation to the Planning and Zoning Commission by, by an alderman, which I didn't know that aldermen were even allowed to come to the Planning and Zoning Commission, and he lobbied on something that, was against, that wasn't even in his ward. So, you know, the intimidation factor, save it. Just because you have a different opinion than other people doesn't mean your opinion is right. You sound intimidating right now, Ralph. And, and I'm, I'm just saying, you, how do you feel? I feel bullied. I call the question. I already called Alderman Gregory, Alderman Purchase. <coughs> All of them purchase and so uh, you know I, I I thank everybody for coming. We spent a long time on this. When we vote, I'm, I'm sticking with my original vote, and that was for because I you know we we spent a long time on it, and nothing nothing has changed in these three weeks. You know we we were um, you know I think five five at one point in time, and now with all of this talk and and hearing these things, now we're going to be short too. And I just think that you know um, I don't want to be viewed that way, and so I'm I'm staying on my original vote. Um, because I don't, I don't want to regret it if nothing happens. So, thank y'all. All the woman purchase. You know, Alderman McMenamin, you say certain things up here, and you talk about intimidation. But sometimes you bully people too. Oh my. You're the first person to say, have we heard from our constituents or talked to our constituents? I've walked for the last three weekends and everybody's door that I've been at, they have brought this situation up and asked me to be opposed to it. I represent a ward that I need to listen to my constituents. People came here today and I want to respect their thoughts and their process of how they think this should be done. And so I don't feel like I should be intimidated or I should be bullied by another older person when we're sitting up here making these tough decisions. We just spent over three hours on this. Alderman McMenamin. Yeah, I think, you know, as someone who's walked downtown for 42 years, I'm a commercial resident of downtown. I love downtown, I care about downtown, and if we're going to sit here and be timid and not express our views, 
that's a bigger mistake. And if, if the truth hurts, well, I'm sorry if the truth hurts. But my opinions are expressed from knowledge and the heart, and I'm, I don't take anything back I've said tonight. And that's the way it is. Call the so, Alderman Williams? Yeah, you got, I got to jump in on this. So, so, the, so I, the crying can't start when we start having the problems. This, that's all I want to say to my colleagues who are going to defeat this. The crying can't start. Because you, you're making the decision right now, and it's going to get painful. This guy we have no control over, it's his hotel, it's not going back to the bank, we've been told. So some bad things is getting ready to happen. I agree with you, um, uh, Alderman McMenamin, and to the media on the back row. We need to record this vote. We need to, you know what? Uh, let me see. Call the question. Yeah, call the question. Yeah, you're right. Call the question. That's out of what, order, uh, Mayor. Yeah, one that's thing, out of uh, order. This is my son. That's out of order, How's Mayor. How's it out of order? That's, that's out of order. Politicking. Hey, that's not politicking. Listen. That's what's going to happen. Bull. The voters are going to decide. The chair has the uh, floor. And uh, this has been very contentious. This isn't the first contentious uh, discussion we've had. But that's, I think, as uh, Andrew Proctor attested to, this is, uh, you know, everybody's passionate. You know, again, I go back to everybody wants the hotel. Nobody doesn't want it. And so that's the decision before us because nobody likes failure, right? Anybody like failure? No. So uh, with that, I'm just going to put out the amendment, and we'll see if anybody wants to second it and go from there first and second it. But uh, we put together order. the amendment, or I put together the amendment based on listening to everybody. So this would be a motion similar to what was presented last time to grant the petition contingent on the following. Amend from 125 hotel rooms to 115, 150 hotel rooms with 250 apartments. So that's 50 more than currently allowed. No kitchenettes allowed in any single occupancy hotel room. Retain a Wyndham flag or better for the hotel. No more than 70% of apartments can be studio apartments. Project funding and construction plan shall be completed within 180 days of zoning approval. Number six, all project work shall be completed according to the requirements of the redevelopment agreement or reverts back to its existing zoning. And number seven, apartments are to be market rate rent and consistent with the information provided to the Planning and Zoning Commission and the City Council by the petitioner. I'll second it. We have who, who, who made the motion? Motion on the. You're making the motion. You got to make the motion. motion. I'll make the motion, and I'll second it. Call the question. So vote on the amendment. Uh, have you pet? You want to pass the question? Question? There was a there was a motion made originally and seconded uh, to deny the petition. Mm -hmm. um, that motion uh, should be voted on or withdrawn. Uh, whether or not you could, uh, I guess you could propose an amendment to that, but the amendment itself is actually contrary to the main motion. Right. Uh, so the proper order would be to vote on the uh, motion, the original motion to deny, then bring, if it's, uh, if it is successful, that is concluded, or someone on the other side has to make a reconsideration, or second, if it's denied, then there would be proper for a subsequent motion to be made. I guess first is there a reconsideration of the motion to deny. I think first we have to vote on it, don't so we? Go ahead and uh, call the call the uh, question. There would be a vote on the motion uh, that was made made and seconded to deny the petition. That's the first vote. Yeah, and if that passes, we're voting on the petition to deny. No. And if that goes forward, that's it. That's it. First is the Correct. petition to deny. The, the first motion that was made, it was my understanding, and perhaps mm -hmm. if it should be restated, was to deny the petition as presented. Right. That is my understanding of what the motion stated. And if uh, that stated. motion is passed, then we're done. That's it. And it is concluded. Correct. The yes vote So we'll is, do a roll call vote or on the, so, uh, so a yes means to deny the petition. That is my understanding of the motion yep. that was made. Correct. Is that correct, Alderman? So, Correct. Roll call vote. So, so if you vote yes, that means roll to call. deny the petition. Yeah, vote. 
So wait a minute. Let me ask a question. So the amended motion that we just seconded, would that be something that couldn't be voted on if we deny the original petition? Correct. Correct. Yes. That is correct. correct. And how do you vote to deny the original petition? If you vote, vote yes. yes, you're voting to deny the petition. And if you vote no, then we can consider the second motion. The amendment, correct. If it passes. If it passes, all right. Are you ready? Yep. Alderman Redpath. Yes. Why aren't we? Oh. Why, why we why should we do a vote on the system. Oh, you want to vote on the system? Yeah. Well, that's okay. the vote on the system. Document. So yes, vote is to vote to deny the petition. Hmm? All over the place. Wow. Oh, I thought I hit it once. Come on. And the petition is denied six voting yes, four voting no. Thank you very much, and thank you, everybody, for your patience and participation. Mayor, could we have a five-minute recess to... Oh, yep, we'll re uh, motion to recess for five minutes. So is there a second? second? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? We're recessed for five minutes. Motion to reconvene the regular city council meeting of the so city moved. council. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed and nay. We're reconvened. Chair recognizes Treasurer Busher for the presentation of the financial report. Thank you, Mayor Langfelder. The corporate fund in the month of September had a beginning balance of $65,504,140. We took in total receipts of $19,629,816. We had total disbursements in the month of September of $29,643,499, which left the corporate fund with an ending balance of $55,490,457. Mayor Langfelder, of that ending balance, your total ARPA funds for the month of September was $25,217,588. This concludes my report, Mayor Langfelder. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve the financial Mayor. report? Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the October 4th, 2022 regular city council meeting and approve the minutes. I move. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to incorporate the pre-council first reading of ordinances in the record of this city council meeting. I'll move. Second. The move and second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. The chair will entertain a motion to incorporate the pre-council reading of the consent agenda into the record of this city council meeting. I'll move, move. Mayor. Second. The move and second. Uh, discussion. There's 
uh, to remove which item? Corporation Council. 2022-430? Yes. Place on the debate for public hearing? Yes. So moved. Second. And that's a vacation ordinance, I believe. Uh, it's Thank been you. moved and second to uh, remove item 2022-430 and place on debate agenda for public hearing. All in favor of that? Aye. 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 Opposed? Say nay. Motion carries. All those in favor? Of, the chair will entertain a motion to place the consent agenda on final passage. So moved. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the consent agenda? Vote yes. Those opposed? Vote no. The voting is now open. And the consent agenda passes nine voting yes, none voting no. Next, uh, agenda number 2022 256, 2022-384, 2022-435, and 20, uh, are all remain tabled or in committee. Is there any motion on any of those? Next item on the agenda is 2020-430, an ordinance vacating a portion of Enos Avenue between 9th Street and 10th Street, and a portion of Miller Street between 9th and 9th Street and 10th Street, and the alley lying east of the lot 13 in Wells and Peck's addition to WRS Legacy LLC. The chair will entertain a motion to recess the regular meeting, the city council to hold a public meeting or hearing regarding the vacation of the right of way. So moved. Second. Okay. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Public hearing is now open. Does anybody wish to address the council regarding the vacation of the right of way? Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn the public hearing and reconvene the regular we'll meeting of the city council. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2022 430 on final passage. So we'll moved. Okay. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The voting is now open. And the motion carries, nine voting yes, none voting no. Next item on the agenda is 2022-440, an ordinance authorizing the amount of $2,200,000 for demolition of some of the buildings, converting some buildings rehabilitating other buildings and road infrastructure improvements to related Midwest LLC utilizing Far East TIF increment finance funds for the popular place redevelopment project for the Office of Planning and Economic Development. The chair will entertain a motion to place agenda number 2022-440 on final passage. Mayor. Yes, Alderman Hanauer. Um, do, real quick, uh, I would m make a motion to, to send back to committee. We don't have a, I haven't seen a developers signed developers agreement or even a draft of a developers agreement yet and uh, I believe we should should have that and I also believe that they're working with on a PLA is what my understanding was I'd ask the developer to come forward I guess we had need a second on that motion I'll second oh. it hi good evening uh, Treg Dorson with related Midwest on the affordable housing development team thank you uh, for your time and thank you for your patience <laughs> absolutely uh, these are all important issues and thank you for your attention to Poplar uh, on the PLA we've had some uh, positive conversations with building trades and the uh, workforce development groups uh, the PLA was discussed uh, yesterday we're talking through it and um, you know gonna continue to have those conversations with building trades does the uh, PLA interfere with the uh, workforce development? Because the previous discussion you were here, I mean, it was pretty much shouted out that uh, by someone in the audience uh, that said, we need workers. You know, right. We're better off delaying a project for a year so we can have workers. Best way to get workers is has work, workforce development. And that's the key opportunity that this uh, 30 plus million dollar project brings. So. Will the PA, PLA interfere with that initiative? We're working, uh, the project will be prevailing wage. Uh, we're working with both the building trades and workforce development groups. Um, if there is a uh, PLA, it will be in a, in a way that allows for both uh, groups to be able to yeah. bid on the job. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Solomon Williams. Yes. So. You know, and I thank you for coming back to town. 
You know, this has been a, a long one coming, but we, we, we are, I agree with you, we are finally in a good place uh, with the unions. Uh, I, I do know the, the roads are going to be bid out. The, some parts of the demolition is going to be out. I'm involved in a meeting coming up <clears throat> that's going to work out the details with several players and the unions. And uh, I mean, it was a long time coming, a bunch of meetings over the weekend. And, and, and what I would say to, to uh, so many people who I think I was misunderstood is that I feel like it's my responsibility my responsibility to help break the barriers uh, of the opportunities that people in my community have. That's why I was so appreciative of Related willing to have a workforce development because that was going to help me address some of the disparities and the inequalities in just the workplace period and in particular in some disciplines of the unions. Uh, but this great movement happened through uh, the NAACP, uh, Mr. Um, Brad, Mr. Brad Shivey, and some of these other players now that um, I think this thing can, can move forward. Uh, we've been waiting for years for Popular Place. I think we owe that to the people to move forward. And then the piece that, that we're all in agreement with now, I, I'm not a construction guy. I don't know about the bidding and all that, but I know right now this Everybody's happy in a long time, you know, and all I'm saying is um, when that plays out, uh, uh, we'll be set to stay on schedule to close and, you know, do the breaking and, and, and move forward. So I'm requesting that we, you know, this come out of debate and get voted on, move forward, and then we continue to our agreed plans uh, that we all agreed with, well, not with you, but with your bosses this weekend, you know. Um, so that, that's my recommendation. Because a lot of folks have spent a lot of time and a, a lot of work and a lot of emotion was involved over these last few days on this little, this project. But we got there, and, and I want to thank some folks. I know there's some folks who came. Calvin may want to speak to it. I don't know if Teresa does or not or somebody from the union do. But when the breakthrough happened, I'm, 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 I'm telling you, I was relieved. But... Um, this is going to be the first time in a long time that we are going to use this project to, to break that heritage article, that, um, that Bloomberg study, and all these different things when they talk about the tracks and all the different things. This, this, this workforce development, along with having a project that union and non-union are going to be working on, that diverse workforce I wanted, is going to be a part of it. I got a lot more understanding on how these unions break out. I just think uh, this could be the model. This could be the model, popular place and how it's being done. So I'm strongly recommending that uh, we bring it out of debate, pass it, and, and move forward, Mayor, as was discussed. Alderman Gregory. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So uh, I'm, I'm happy to hear that there's been some talks. I've, I've had some talks as well, and, and, and me and Alderman Williams has, has you know, definitely had some talks uh, uh, since this thing has happened. So I, I definitely um, support it, and, and, and I say if there, there's been some talks on, uh, on, on agreement and PLA or agreement and stuff, then before we vote on it, Roy, I think we need to put it in writing and do an amendment right now. And so, therefore, when it leaves here, it is exactly with what you want. I think it, I think the thirty percent mandatory minority particip participation on this job should be, should be in our agreement, along with if if it cannot be filled by the other unions because they have the option in their contract to pull from everyone else if, to, uh, for disciplines, and if it cannot, then you guys should retain the right to hire directly um, and work with, with your 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 workforce um, development because we know there will be some disciplines that cannot fill thirty percent on that job and they will have to go uh, either either pull from another union and if they don't have that then at that point um, you know I, I think you know uh, uh, you guys should retain the right to hire directly and work with our the workforce development um, is that is that some of the conversations that, that that you guys have had with them isn't that along there so we, we've had conversations with both groups yes. yeah unions and workforce development groups yes. Um, on the percentages and the breakdown of which trades would have to be right. covered by a group that's, you know, non-union, yeah. um, you know, quite frankly, I think we'd, we'd need to bring in our construction team and have a broader conversation to, to really understand 
the, the micro dynamics of that. So, yeah, just to, uh, oh, go ahead, Alderman no, I'm just I'm just saying if, if, if we leave this, then, then the agreement may no, not so, go so how you I, want. I, I, it's your project and whatever you want right. to do is just my Well, suggestion. and the only reason Alderman why is because. Alderman has the floor. Were you done? Yes. Alderman so, so I was, um, I, I guess um, I, I did hear, you know, Mr. Shivey would be happy with this, right? But that's just Mr. Shivey. The only reason why I'm having hesitation right now is because I, I, I want the other, the, the, what were they, the plumbers, the, other disciplines. the pain, yeah, the other disciplines at the table to hear this and not just get it from the, well, the laborers. I get so confused. I think, you, I think the building trades is who you met with, isn't that correct? Correct. Alderman Conley. That was all the union. Thank Alderman you, Conley oh, has the so floor. He, so he uh, represented all of them already? Alderman Conley has the floor, oh, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Sooner we uh, stay in regiment, sooner we get out. Okay. <laughs> it's so too late the for screen. that, Mayor. Follow the screen. <laughs> <We're not gonna>, um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And um, thank you for your openness and your willingness to, to listen to all of these questions. Um, I was not party to any of the meetings this weekend. Um, Alderman Williams, I appreciate that they're being held. I appreciate that you're bring that you're listening to all of our, you know, our interested parties. This is a big project, and I'm excited to see it move forward. You're absolutely right. This has been years mm -hmm. in the making, which is why I seconded the motion to hold it because we have had instances in the past where verbal conversations don't get set into writing. If we put this in a developer's agreement that we get from you with an understanding of what the PLA is going to be, our, ex, our ex expectations for minority involvement in these construction and trades jobs that you're gonna be creating. Um, it is in Ward 3, but it's city funds that we're talking about. And, and I just, I think we cover ourselves, we cover everyone around this horseshoe, we cover our developer and we cover our trades when we make sure that the understandings that were had at tables that not everyone around this horseshoe was present for, that those are put into writing. Alderman Gregory, you, you said it yourself, let's put this into writing so that we can all, we can all see what we're agreeing on. So if we hold it for two weeks, no, after the no. years that we've Absolutely. been going through this, um, to have a, a, so that we all have a same expectation and understanding of what the standards are for the redevelopment of Poplar Place. Um, I think it's a safer, smarter move for us so that we can all be on the same page because right now we're not. Alderman Hanar. Yeah, um, we have had situations and, and this, is, this is to protect all of us, all of us, and because we want it on paper. What we talk about up here doesn't mean boo. It has to be on paper. And you know, you're still in negotiations with different things. We want to know what those negotiations are. We, we want to know what the outcome is and give you the opportunity to, to finish it. We vote on this now. He can do whatever he wants. He can do whatever he wants. We're, we need to protect ourselves here. I'm not, I'm 100% for this project. But you've been delaying it all along. Because, well, because there hasn't been a, a developer's agreement. There, we have ways, things that we have to do, steps that we have to do. They're not done. We, w this is a $30 million project. This isn't a, a, a $5,000, you know. This, this is a big, this is a huge project. And, and, and look, I understand your excitement and wanting to ram it through and all that, but I think we're better served. You, we go back, give him the opportunity to finish his negotiations, and then we, we bring it up, and, and it'll, it'll pass unanimously. But I, I can't, I, I haven't seen any, you know, really the, the, the project plan, who's paying for what, who's doing this, you know. All that, all that gets spelled out in, in the developer's agreement. Am I wrong, Mr. Zirkel? <clears throat> the... Um both schedule and budget and so on are all addressed in the developer's agreement. And the uh, issue that I'm not familiar with is the agreements relating to the PLA and so on because that's a new development and we uh, would want to see a copy or whatever the agreements are with respect to that. If, if, that's, the, if that's the direction that the uh, private developer is going in. Yeah, and, and I'm not saying that there is or that there will or will not be a PLA. Okay. I'm just saying that we've had conversations with building trades, 
the option for a PLA has come up and we're continuing to have conversations with them. Okay. Yeah, just so everybody's on the same page, uh, the council's already approved $1.2 million. So uh, even though the uh, uh, ordinance says 2.2, it's to re-ratify the 1.2, which was to the roads and the curbing sidewalks, that's going to be bid out. So the unions more than likely will get that job. And then the rest is demolition and things of that nature. The demolition falls under the city's purview. So we will bid that out according to city. And the uh, majority of the time that goes to unions as well. So uh, the other question I have though, before Alderman Redpath and then Williams McMinimum, uh, what's your timeline with regards to Ida's closing? Because it's my understanding it's been approved by Ida and when will the closing, will two weeks matter or not? Two, two weeks, um, Ida has passed it through their loan committee. We are on track to go to Ida's board in mid-November. Uh, so going to Ida's board in mid-November uh, with the commitment from the city will um, help us assure passage from Ida, which will put us on track to close in January. Um, is the two-week window um, detrimental to a point where we, we won't be able to make Ida's board? Uh, no. Uh, I think past the two-week window, uh, we're really in a, at a difficult territory. Yeah, just so everybody realizes, Ida, on other projects, they want the city's commitment. So if the city does not pass or move forward, um, then that's probably a death knell for the project which has been wanted for decades, just not a couple of years. This has been the most dilapidated, crime-ridden area of Springfield. You have a new school over there, uh, you, a lot of new development happening, but this is a nucleus that has to happen. So, and it's 7%, I think, what the city's participation is on this TIF dollars, which are the people there. I mean, it's the boundaries of the Poplar Place. It's all TIF funds, so it's the people that pay property taxes that, that generated the... Uh, uh, the amount going into the project, it's about 7% of the project, isn't it? Of the uh, 38 I think million it's or whatever less. it is. So it's a, yeah. a million dollars on uh, about 38.3 mm -hmm. okay. million, $3 million. So it's about so 6%. It's about two, yeah. yeah. Okay. I just wanted those points clarified. Alderman Redpath and Alderman Williams. And do you Alderman have a McDonald's. developer's agreement prepared or, or do you have one? We, we will, um, we do not have a developer's agreement prepared. Uh, we've worked with other municipalities in the past where we've drafted developer agreements, so we, we would be in a, uh, a good place to do that. Well, look, this is going to pass the city council because everybody wants it. It's, it. I understand the people have different questions about, you know, put it in writing and all that other stuff, but maybe my question to corporation council is, is this something that we could, if we did decide to pass this tonight, that we could put a contingency in, to, to have the developer's agreement, the PLA, and the, do we need to put in a, the, the number of the minority participation? <clears throat> we, there is a, there's a draft developer agreement done. It incorporates the, you know, what you would presented to council, I think, two weeks ago, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. four weeks ago. Right. And it's just our normal boilerplate developer agreement like you've seen uh, 15 times. But my point, but, uh, Corporation uh, Council, is... I was just trying to find out, I didn't know if there were new business points. Okay. That's what I was uh, trying right. to clarify. No, no, not at this time. I, I think it, it, it may settle, it may, it may ease some, uh, some thought that if we know that there's going to be a developer's agreement put in and a PLA brought up, that we can vote on this and, and send it out tonight. Is that right? Certainly the, county, the council can act on it tonight if they choose to, and it, it's the, the – um, what I'm not exactly clear on is, that are there going to be some additional requirements? For example, you mentioned the 30 percent. Yes. We can so, certainly so. add that into the ordinance, the actual language of the ordinance That's with an amendment, if, if you would like. So, so uh, I'm not uh, sure on all the discussions that have happened you had mentioned over the last few days. Well, the meeting that, that they had was with <coughs> the building trades, which is 11 unions, correct? That was correct. with uh, Mr. Shivey and the, and the other unions. So. Uh, I think their biggest concern was just making sure that the PLA was put in place, and, and they, I think, agreed on to the minority participation number of about 30%. Is that right? Uh, I know it was a great conversation. I don't have the exact number around minority participation. Okay. Which I would have to go back if, to if our we can't, construction. If we can't answer those numbers, then we almost have to hold this. Yeah. Well, 
Yeah, we can, uh, Corporation Council saying if we want, we can have a special meeting. But real quick on the PLA, let's, I want to make sure everybody's on the same page here because we are not the referee for the unions. And the uh, Y project, you know, that $30 million state-of-the-art facility, I had two unions in my office arguing the point that other unions were doing their work. So project labor agreement, to my interpretation, that anybody can come up here and argue the point or say, Mayor, you're wrong. Project labor agreement typically is to make sure everybody in a union does their line of expertise work. The other part is to make sure the work's done on time. There's no disruption of the work, no, uh, no uh, protest or whatever. Uh, so it continues. But what uh, we do not want, Calvin Pitts is here. That's who, uh, we're, that's wh who you're really working with, right? Yeah, Calvin absolutely. Pitts, Bone Training. We've, we've had and great, they're on South Grand. You know, we, everybody Calvin. was rallying behind Cap 1908. He's been there for before that. And he's the trainer, and he's gotten the MC3 status. Just so everybody's known, he's jumped through the hoops. Everybody asks, hey, let's jump through the hoops. He goes out to D.C. on his own dime, gets MC3 certification. What that means, it's through the plumbers, I believe, and he, again, he can correct me if I'm wrong. The reason for that is because that was a requirement of the unions to provide this type of training. So he trains for School District 186 on electrical because he's an electrician. He's been in the union there. So he gets the certification so he can train on plumbing, carpentry, and all of it. And so... We heard before, the unions need workers. Anybody think that the unions don't need more work workers? Anybody does not believe that? They need a qualified workforce. This serves as a pre-apprenticeship program to make that happen and move forward with the initiative. Mayor so what, what should not happen, I have the floor, what should not happen floor. is this one, Corporation Council can correct me if I'm wrong, the PLA, if the developer wants to enter into it, that's their discretion. He said he's going to pay prevailing wage. What uh, Alderman Williams brought up is segregated in the heartland. If anybody has not read that report, they need to read that report because that talks about segregation in Springfield on the other side of the tracks. And how you can break that cycle is through workforce development. And that's what we're trying to do here. And there's workforce needs. With what I've just heard here, and I, I haven't been in the meetings. I haven't been in the meetings either. And it makes me leery. I'm against uh, doing a developer's agreement tonight with a PLA on it because I want to see the details just like Alderman Hanauer and, call and Alderman question. Conley. So with regards to that, what you do not want happening is saying 30% minorities had to be within the unions. Because you know what that does? Bye-bye, Calvin. That doesn't include you. Now, now you're making that include, up stories no, now, man. That's, that's what you're it, making up stories 30% now, in the unions, just as Alderman Gregory just said, he said if it's not provided by one union, it's provided by another. And so that's the issue. We want to see the details. So we're not going to be signing off on a developer's agreement with the PLA until we see the uh, I's dotted and the T's crossed. Call the question. Yeah. yeah. My Since I called Sorry. out... Uh, Calvin Betts, he can speak to it because he's probably been in the discussions. Yeah, I have no idea. Hi, my name is Calvin Pitts, and I am uh, the owner of Bone LLC Construction. And um, yes, we have been in a discussion. I've, I've been in discussion with owners. We've had, um, um, you know, labor uh, conversations has been had, and um, I am optimistic that this is going to be. Um, you know, it's going to be a good good project. I think that um, you know it's enough to do that. That um, you know we we can all be involved. Um, PLA agreements. I, I hear that um, it's a living document. It's not a requirement. Um, but the owner himself uh, have been talking to uh, labor, and there is absolutely going to be an agreement. And um, there is nobody being excluded at this point. You know. Um, and unlike any of the projects that I ride down when I go down 11th Street or I go up Wabash or I come down MacArthur or I pass any of the schools and I don't see anybody that look like me, this project's not going to be like that. You know, they have no issue involving professionals at every, at every level and at every, you know, um, color. So I, I think that it's going to be really important that 
um, you know, we, we move forward. I know times of an accident, and I know you guys can do what you want to do anyway. I've experienced that. Uh, but I will say that um, that project in that community that is all of a sudden an issue for your 1 million or, or, or 2.2, you know, it's been falling apart, you know, and, 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 and probably not too many people have been, been over there. You know, there's absolutely no interest, you know. Uh, we we have have interest over there. We look forward to uh, the growth and development. It's going to benefit, you know, my brother and my sister and my um, um, cousin that stay like within blocks of this place. You know, it, it's personal. It's not just uh, the business piece, and and every and, and not just. Let's look past just the dollars that are attached and and how you know there needs to be a clean on everything. Let and let's look at. What, what will it do? What benefit will this city have? And I will tell you that from um, a professional standpoint and meeting uh, with this owner and understanding that they have done multiple projects in several cities and states, that they are professional, they know what they're doing, and they, have, they actually have things that are set up, and the MC3 is, is not the, um, you know, it, it's not a sell for them. It's not something that I'm bringing to a table that's attractive to them. They literally have a, uh, a whole deal that's developed around uh, helping developers and helping uh, contractors, you know, um, grow in the process of this, this whole thing, just like the city and, and council is, is interested in growing uh, contractors and businesses in our city because that's what keeps our city striving. And we all know that, right? And it's not about anything else, right? It's about our city and our people, mm -hmm. and that's all. Uh, so I, I hope, hope I didn't say too much. Thank you. No, but, right. um, Thank you. Thanks. Alderman Williams and Gregory yeah. and so, Hannah. So, Mayor, you, you know, I, I'm feeling some kind of way right now because, and I'm talking to Ward 8, 9, and 10. Uh, you know, when East Side projects come up and happen, one of my first experiences was coming on this council and watching this man get told you taking a shelter. Love you, but we voted. We put the shelter there. When, and when, when really the practice is like, okay, we're going to respect each other as all the men and all the women. That's why I was trying my best to follow Keisha's lead on the earlier subject matter. Because this is the way I was hoping we could operate regardless of what special interest wants. But through these weekend meetings, I was moved. I, I'll be honest. I was, things are better, much better in that situation, but then the old stuff is coming out again, see, of what you're used to, of what you're used to, the battling and this and that. I would never try to say or hold stuff in your ward if I didn't have a good reason. I have thought this thing through. I came up with funding. It's our funding. It's from our TIF. Them people over there, their TIF. So, so I said, now they can't say it's general fund or something else, and because I was trying to eliminate having this with you guys. And then we have to worry about the community listening and watching. This happens over and over and over to the point where I said, skip 8, 9, and 10. And we had to go straight to the, uh, what's the guy, Shivey guy. You know, we had to start having these conversations and being sincere. And we had some good ones. And I thought it was some good movements. I think we're in a good place. But I don't like holding stuff, because we did this last week to me. You know, oh well, I don't. You know, it should have been with this consent degree and done with. That's how good this project is. That's how good the funding is. I got the right funding, the right mix, and thank God over the weekend. So I thought we had the right mix of, of workers. It looks like so everybody said we get here to city council and we get played. We get played the same, the same game. Now I, I do understand the thirty percent mayor, and I'm concerned only because. But Chuck kind of is teaching me something at the same time. Well, you know he is all the other unions, and I'm like, well, I really kind of want some of their representatives in the room just to make sure at least the big four, the plumbers and electricians, so they don't come back and say, well, we didn't know about that because they're the unions that struggle with these numbers and these percent. Mr. Shivey, he got it. You know, he can go 50, 80 maybe. I don't know. But but the other ones really don't. So I'm, I'm trying to work that, correct that in my big statement saying it's my response. He's trying to move these obstacles and these barriers with this opportunities, this workforce development piece, being friendly with the unions, working together on a common project. And it was it, it's kind of gone. But we're going to practice this hold for something that you know is you say it's going to pass. 
You know it's a good project. There's nothing wrong. It's a win-win for everybody. We need to pass this because I'm the alderman of War 3, and I'm asking for that because I thought that's what we did. We kind of, you know, followed the lead. But I guess when it comes to the east side ones, we can say, oh, no, we're going to tell you. That shouldn't be. And that's why I'm feeling some kind of way because this ain't the first time I witnessed this. When, when an alderman said he knows his ward, he knows his people, and he knows what he wants, and the city funding part of this the city funding part, well, guess what? The 1.2, I wasn't around when y'all passed it. The 1 million, compared to what this guy's company and what the state's doing, come on now. You, 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 you're creating these delays and all these arguments when, when, when I thought it had made some progress. I don't know where we're going to be after this because I know how you guys operate. Don't but it don't. should be, it should be, it should be. I asked for it to come out. You wanted to debate. We're debating it. The debate's over, and we should move on this and hopefully pass it. And then I got a meeting already scheduled with all of them. Um, coming up, you know, I don't know. I think your boss got to come back in town first. Then all of us going to sit down. And we're going to do, and this, this is over my head, I'll be honest. We're going to do, I don't know if it's PLA or some kind of agreement they are, they are going to do, because that's how, how I had to find out about the roads and the demolition and how the union's going. And I, and I was happy. I get here tonight and I run into this. I run into this. Well, we need to hold it. And, and, and Aaron, I voted on many things that I wasn't at the meeting. Can I speak or now? I didn't. Or are you going to keep Well, you can wait else. till I finish. Let's, uh, just yeah. direct you can wait till I finish. Direct I the you, comments okay? to the chair, please. Well, you know, so, so I Thank feel you. some kind of way when they do these kind of things right. only to certain aldermen. We are, either we're going to respect each other, zoning, it don't matter. We need to respect each other and quit this, you know, um, the way they address us as if we don't, you know, well, you don't know what you're doing, so I'm going to hold it for you. I don't need you to hold nothing for me, Hanauer. Could I, could I respond, Alderman Mayor? Gregory, Sponsor. you after Alderman Gregory, Sponsor. you can. I just, I just want to be, I just want to be clear in my, in, in, in my approach for this is, is it wasn't to never cut, cut Calvin out. I'm actually, uh, uh, in this tr to make sure I wouldn't, I wouldn't co-sign for anything that's going to cut our, you know, uh, a person from our, anybody from our community out of, of this agreement. But I really think from the conversations that have been had that this is, this, this project is going to be a hurdle uh, uh, over this this minority um, shortage that we have on workers and workers in general, um, the the agreement that and this is why we just spent three hours on the window. I'm prepared to stay here another three hours to get an agreement done for this popular place because it is that important. It's three times worse than the uh, than than the window over there. I mean, it's it's terrible, and we need to devote the time. Y'all gotta have agreement, whatever. Get them on the phone, get an agreement. Or Roy, we got us, we the alderman, and you write it right now. Well, we're going to have a vote that. here so, shortly. So, so, so to, it's not, the first thing I, 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 I learned was to count votes. Mm -hmm. Count votes. And, and, and it's going to pass, but we have to wait three, four weeks until the language is right. But it deserves to pass tonight, and we know the language that they're going to put in. We can put it in tonight, and you, you tell them what you want, and they got to adjust to what you want to do. If the other unions is mad, guess what? Let them be mad. Be mad at whoever they want to be mad at, but they can't be mad at you because your 30% is what you want on the project. And if they can't fulfill, because they got a rule in the union book they can fill, and if they can't fill it, that's why we're admitting it to ensure that the owner retains the right to hire directly and work with Calvin and work with Jermaine and work with um, this young man that's in the back that is a union electrician right now that's here to speak on his troubles. So there's plenty of black contractors and minority contractors in our community that are looking for the chance. I'm telling them all about the opportunity and keep your eyes on it and watch this tonight so that therefore you can go through the bidding process. Because I'm in business and bidding is hard. It's hard. It, it is not no easy thing to get up in here and bid. So all of those things are going to have to be walked through with folks, uh, with, with Calvin and helping people who have been through it. That's just what I think. I, I think it should pass tonight. I agree with you, brother. And and I know, you know, the makeup of it. And I'm saying right now, it's your project. I'm not going to, I'll, I'll sponsor it, but if you're not going to agree with it, I'm not doing it. Because I never, that's, I agree with you. 
I just look that's what we're supposed to we do. Need to, uh, follow, we need to follow the uh, routine here. Yeah. But, and, uh, and I, the one, and we will be voting time. on it because there's a motion on the floor. And then the other side of it is it can pass as is. And then you continue to work through it. That's all I'm saying. You work through the process. Alderman Hanauer. You know, um, Alderman Williams, since you've come on this board, you've been, you've been very uh, divisive. I'm trying to, what I tried to do up here. That's names. That's what happened earlier. We don't have to call each other names. What, what I'm ben trying Hanauer, to do up here is make sure we have an agreement in front of us that we can look at. We have no agreement whatsoever. And th we have rules on, we have rules when we have, we use city money. Now, I don't know if you've seen those rules, but I think that, 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 um, Mr. Zirkel, it'd be good to get him a copy because some of the rules are everything has to be bid. If it uses city money, everything has to be bid, including the contractors. And, you know, the bid has to go out. It's got to be fair and all that. But we also have to have a developer's agreement. We don't have that. Forget whether, whether the PLA or not, we don't have a developer's agreement. That's that's one of the first things the mayor said we got we you know to to make everything fair for everybody we need it two weeks he said it's not going to hurt him you know you just got to get together get the development agreement get things you know whatever other negotiations you got but you got to understand all the contractors have to bid for the job I all of them I'm saying they're bidding I said that. They're bidding for the roles. They're well, it seems like you're, 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 you're you bring you bring Calvin up and nothing against Calvin, but he has to bid on it, too. And it, he may not get the job. He may not bid the, the point where he may not get the job. And, and that's what concerns me. You you know, you want to just give it away. You don't want to follow the rules. I don't think saving this for two weeks we're, we'll act on it next week. Hopefully, we could get a developer's agreement. We can push it forward and be done with it. I don't even care if we have a, a, develop, uh, have a so special many. meeting yeah. after next week. But I, don't, I just think it's not good for us as a council to pass something forward. And, and we've had other, other aldermen up here that have stopped other projects because there was no developer's agreement. Now, this has nothing to do with east side, west side. But you want to make it. You want to make it east side, no, west no, side. No, no, but you know this what? I'll practice it. I'll practice what you Alderman practice. Hanauer me, has, I'll be Alderman it. Hanauer has the floor. I'm, is that it? I'm just saying that this is, if we don't have a developer's agreement, we're voting on something that we have no idea about. And that's the reason why I asked to hold it. With regards to the uh, need for bidding, uh, again, this is a developer's project. Um, it's my understanding is, and I'd ask Corporation Council, with a job training program, it's not bid out. Is that correct? Well, it depends on the process. I'm that. not I'm not certain how they're organizing the work. Any of the work uh, paid for by the city is going to be required to be bid out. In other words, uh, any of those elements and so on, if it TIF is used, it has to be a uh, prevailing wage project. If you do IDA, it has to be a prevailing wage project. So that process, IDA has a process, the city has a process in terms of the soliciting bids, how it's done, all of those different things. All of those things will have to be followed in a normal fashion. Mm -hmm. And IDA, IDA has its own set of rules, you know, relating to how they process it and so on. Have you done IDA projects before? We have. And how does that typically work? With job training, uh, LR Contracting is our contracting firm, and they'll be the GC on this project. Uh, they have they have extended experience with working with IDA, um, and they will be uh, leading the bidding process. Thank you. All the women come. Oh, yeah, well, just for clarity. Uh, sure. There, at this point, anything that uh, I've submitted has been a bid. It's been um, the proposal. I you know, I haven't been given anything. Calvin, could you speak into the microphone, please? Yeah. So everything has been bidded up to this point. Um, as it relates to the training, that is something that uh, Related is going to offer to the surrounding community. Uh, they're going to 
had me do that, and it has nothing to do uh, with any of the funding or or and 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 the, the funds that you guys are referring to is the the, the streets and, and the demolition. Uh, you know, and and I think that there's there's no other interest in that. And one thing I think we'll probably be surprised with, you know, uh, the laborers can can say or any any. Um, um, labor group can say that you know there needs to be this, this, and this, but unless you have a contractor that wants to bid, you know, and and hire the workers because the unions they provide the the workforce, but it's gonna it's gonna take a contractor to say hey I want to go in and I want to do this work and and then they have to submit a uh, an effective bid for them to be on the project. So you know business managers don't typically put people to work. They provide workers for the employer and the employer put them to work is generally how that works. Thank you. Alderman Conley, then Alderman Donlin, then Alderman Williams, and Alderman Purchase. Thank you. Um, and and um, Calvin, thank you for that clarification. I'm Alderman Williams, I'm going to speak to you. Uh, I am. I know, Mayor, we speak. That's right. But I just, I was called it. out by name, so I'd like sure. to respond. Um, and I'm going to speak to you as a woman because that's where I'm coming from. And I've been plenty of spots where I've been told one thing's going to happen. Hey, this is how it's going to go. It's going to go like this. And yeah, we're going to have you there. We're going to have women at the table. This is going to be diverse. And then when we get to the end of that path, nothing's all of a sudden it's a bunch of and, uh, no offense to other people, but it's, it's a bunch of people who also don't look like me. And so when I have gotten the short end of that stick, it's because I took someone's, and I'm not saying your word, Alderman Williams. I am just saying, I haven't seen anything in writing. I think that what we've got here is a fabulous project, and I'm not trying to disparage anyone by saying, let's commemorate this and put it in writing so we have something to hold people to. Contracts are binding. Developer agreements give all of us an assurance. That, that what you what you want and what I agree I think what everyone around this horseshoe wants for this project is to see it be something that doesn't just generate safe clean housing in a neighborhood that desperately needs it but it also as as mr. Pitts alluded to generates work and and, and tra workforce training opportunities but we have that in writing I mean it, it seems to me that you, you've you made some, some good progress and you're talking to the right people, and I do very much appreciate that. I also know that you're this, this is the same company that's owned this property for the whole time that it's gone into disrepair. And I'm not casting aspersions on you, but I want you to know, I'd like to see that this project that is being talked about as being transformational is, 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 commem is put in writing in a way that we can hold you to it also. Because I've, I've gotten that short stick. And, and you, can, you can point at me like you think I'm, I'm trying to undermine. I am trying to be very supportive of this. I want to see this go. I'm not talking weeks. I mean, I, I, I'd be happy if we have a developer's agreement and, and there are strong language in there so we know that we're going to have something for our entire community come out of this project, which is fabulous. It's so exciting. Um, that we have something we can point to. I'm more than happy to have a special meeting next week. We don't need to drag this out, but we do need to have things in a way that we're all on the same page, that we can point to it. And in two years, when maybe none of us are up here, I mean, I don't know, there's an election next spring, that council can point to this agreement and say, I'm sorry, you have to do what was agreed upon. And it's, it's not, an aspersion on the east side. It's not an aspersion on Ward 3. I listened to Doris Turner talk about Poplar Place for years. This is, I know the, I know the enormity of having this project finished, absolutely. And I know the value of having this project finished with minority representation, with women coming on board, and with training so that we have young adults learning decent paying jobs. I know all of that. So when I say I'd like to see something in writing before we make a final decision, Alderman, with, with all due respect, that is not intended to cause an extreme delay. I kind of just assumed we'd have a developer's agreement. I kind of assumed it'd be sitting on my desk when I got here, but I still assumed we would have something. No surprises. Um, and I, I think it's, it's important that we represent the 
best project. We, we bring the best project forward. I'm hearing that it's there. I'm hearing you're right on. It's right there. There's details that need to be worked out. Let's get them worked out. Let's have a special meeting next week. That's not a problem. But please know that this is not coming from a place of trying to micromanage or tell you how you should be voting. I'm telling you from my heart, from my personal experience, of being the woman who gets left behind, when all the men get to go ahead and walk ahead, all of a sudden it's like, oh, we forgot, Aaron. The door's closed for you, so come back next time and we'll talk to you again about it. Oh, I want to see it in writing. And again, I'm not doubting you, but that is a document that lasts past this council and it's a document that lasts past this night and past this council, and I think it's important for us. Alderman Donlin. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to just say a few words. You know, uh, I, I tend to be one that I, I, I like to, at times, sit back and it's, it's, it's interesting. Come into the room a lot of times, and I really don't know how I'm going to vote on something. And I like to be one that I, I sit back and I listen to the debate, and of course you all know I'm not afraid to contribute to the debate. And I'm sitting back tonight, I'm here, you're, you've been, and I said it first thing, you've been very patient, set three, three hour meeting, and, and you've, you've come up and you're willing to talk about the project, I appreciate that. I think this is a wonderful thing. You know, Doris Turner was hammering this, hammering this for a long time. I know we ran into an issue uh, with, with who owned the roads and how we could do something, and the mayor pledged to try to figure something out. And when this ordinance came forward, I, I, was I am excited about it, excited about it moving forward, excited about the reinvestment in our inner city. It's so important. And I, I'm sitting here listening to the debate. You, you, my alderman to my left brings up the, the uh, desire to have the project labor agreement and or redevelopment agreement in writing so we can take a look at it. I believe the alderman to my right, alder woman to my right, makes the second. And I'm, I'm listening to the debate, kind of curious to how this is gonna go, and all of a sudden, I'm against it. An alderman, I, I didn't even say a word. I was sitting here listening to the debate. So anyway, I, I take a little bit of an issue with it. I don't take a little bit. I take an issue with that. And uh, I, I think this is a great project. I hope we can work it out. Mary, you suggested uh, not wanting to do anything until we uh, see, you know, see th the documents in writing. If it has think, a PLA language. Yeah, I think that has merit. And, uh, you know, but I want to see this moving forward as, fastly, as fast as possible. And whether they have to have a special meeting or what have you, it sounds like you made some productive, had some productive conversations. I was interested in hearing that tonight. Thank you for sharing that with me. And uh, I, I intend on doing whatever I can to make this thing move forward as fast as possible because mm -hmm. I think it's important for the city. Hope that was clear enough. Thank you. Alderman Williams. Well, again, so you travel down here again and, and we got a delay. Your bosses were here over, over the weekend. They're gonna find out about a delay. So, so, and 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 uh, Alderman Hanauer wanted it on debate, but, but, you know, last week we could could got told that's gonna to be a concern, and then we'll have it here. You know, I know that we's eventually gonna to get to the agreement because that's what's been going on all over the weekend. But now you guys want to see it first, and and all this, and I mean that that that's your right. All I'm saying is that I'm trying to do the right thing, but I'm thinking about so many individuals and people and travel who have been trying to work this. And the whole time I'm getting delayed, delayed, delayed. Before they even got here, we had delayed at ECD before it passed 9-0. But we had a delay. Again, coming from the same source, by the way. So this is why I have this kind of reaction because I'm like, wait a minute, guys, just say yes. you talking about how great it's going to be. I'm going to meet with those guys, your, the owner will be back down, your boss, and we're going to marry this thing up because they're the ones that told me, Roy, you, you guys are not that far from each other. You know, what you're, you're, you're not that, and they bridge that thing. And so that's why I, I reacted that way. You normally are in the middle just like you sit. So that's why yeah, I don't, said don't, don't, don't that way assuming. to don't you. Don't be assuming. I won't either. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, Teresa Haley did sign up to speak on this. Thank you, Mayor and members of City Council. This is a sad night for all of us. I'm tired, I haven't eaten, and I know you probably haven't either. But we can't keep holding up projects on the east side. The time is now to do something about this. I was the only female yesterday invited to the meeting with the owners invited to the meeting with Calvin Pitts and a few others. I talked with Brad Shivey on the phone. 
He simply says, Teresa, we don't have a problem with Calvin Pitts. Calvin deserves to be at the table and to be on the job site like everyone else. I said the NAACP will be watching this project because we want to ensure that union members and both non-union members have an opportunity to provide, get a job, and be able to feed their families. I don't want anyone coming on the east side or coming over to popular place who don't look like the people who live in the community. We talk about what diversity looks like. It looks like what's in this room tonight. And those are the kinds of individuals that we want to see on the project. We want to give the neighborhood people an opportunity. I don't want a bunch of people coming from out of town or outside of Springfield working on this project. We have qualified people here. And for those who aren't qualified, we have Mr. Calvin Pitts and his workforce development training program, which the owners are excited about working with. The owners made that decision. And in talking with Brad Shivey and the rest of the unions, they're excited about getting their piece of the pie. There's enough pie for everyone to be able to eat at this table. I ask that you vote for this and that you move this forward so everyone has an opportunity to eat and have a good Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? I would like to say something. Uh, you can, after the vote, on the, the vote before us Hold. is with regards to sending it back to committee. You're right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. 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 Motion fails. Is there a motion on the call. ordinance? Roll call. I thought we were voting on it on this thing. Send it back are we not to using the system? Send it back to committee. Uh, Alderman Redpath. Wait a minute. What are we voting on? What's to send it back, send to, it committee. back to committee. Yes. Alderman Gregory. No. Alderman Williams. No. Alderman Fulgency. Yes. Alderwoman Purchase. Yes. Alderwoman Desenso. Uh, Alderman McMenamin. No, because I think we can come up with some conditional language to approve this tonight. Alderwoman Connolly. Yes. Alderman Donlin. Yes. Alderman Hanar. Yes. Six yeses and three noes, Mayor. Thank you. So it was sent back to committee. Alderwoman Purchase. Thank you, Mayor. My question is, how long do you think it will take you to get this finished, especially if my colleagues are asking for a special meeting next week. Do you think you can have this done by Friday and be ready for next week? We're going to move as fast as we can. Um, uh, of course, there are probably deeper political waters than we knew, um, but we're going to bring both groups together and move as fast as we can. As I mentioned, um, it's crucial for us to reach a solution within the next couple of weeks to not delay the IDA board schedule. Um, I know we've had productive conversations and we'll keep, keep having them. Um, thank you all for, for your time and support of the project. We look forward to working with all of you. I just encourage you to really try to get it done this week so that the mayor can send us an email asking for everyone to come back as early as possible. We'll do our best. Well, actually, everybody should be ready to take a vote in two weeks because that's when it has to happen. And keep in mind, the PLA is the developer's determination. He has to follow rules according to Ida, according to TIF. And one, it has to include Calvin Pitts and the training program. Because what's been set up here, and I don't care what the union says, I want to make sure the T's are crossed, the I's are dotted. Because it's time to get people out of the thumb and move forward. So you cannot restrict you cannot restrict the opportunity for job training, for people to learn a trade, to live on their own, as Teresa Haley had said. So that's what has to change. So if everybody thinks that, oh, PLA or nothing, uh, we're taking that vote next week or next in two weeks. So uh, we'll see what that PLA says. But it can't be all for the unions and restrictions where one union 
benefits from the formula. That cannot happen Developers because the one the ones that should benefit it's right here. Far East TIF increment finance funds, people living in the neighborhood because that's who paid the $2.2 million. So thank you for being here. Sorry you had to sit through everything. No problem at all. Yeah. Thank you again. I, I look forward to uh, seeing you guys in a couple weeks or oh, Alderman Redpath. Week. Sorry, Alderman Redpath wanted to make a comment. Well, Mayor, that's why they that's why they want the developers' agreement so they can make sure the, that all the T's are crossed and the do, I's are dotted. Uh, I encourage you to try to work with Corporation Council if they can help you with the developers' agreement to get it back to us. And I, I everyone in this room said that they're re re ready ready to vote on it next week on a special meeting. We can have a special meeting. I mean, so we can do it that quick. So please do that. We all want this project. We just want to see it in writing and we'll, we'll move forward. Okay? Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Are we about ready? Next item on the agenda is 2022-467, an ordinance authorizing acceptance and execution of grant number 23-751029 from the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Development under the Local Tourism and Convention Bureau grant program in the amount of $503,640 with matching funds required in the amount of $251,820 beginning July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2023 and supplemental appropriation in the amount of $503,640 for the Springfield Convention Visitors Bureau for emergency passage. Chair will entertain a motion to so place moved. agenda number 2022-467 on final passage. So moved. Second. Been moved and second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion vote yes. Those opposed vote no. The voting is now open. We got, we got one that stepped out there. Oh, boy. We need a vote? Mm-hmm. Hey, Kenny, could you, you grab seven or eight? Ralph, he just stepped out. We need his vote. Uh, since there's only, it's probably passed since there's one out. No, we need the additional. Need the eight? <coughs> Actually, <laughs> it fails for, <laughs> it fails for a lack of a super majority. Oh, yep. Oh, then we need one more. Oh. oh. Or Joe could vote for it. Then would be no, two voted present. Oh, oh Alderman Hannah is up. No pay for hand hour this month. There he is. Hey, got a vote. Hold on. What are we voting on? Just vote yes. It's <laughs> past my bedtime, man. What are we doing here? Uh, this is a Convention Visitors Bureau uh, grant for emergency passage. Hold on, let me get this. Oh, my thing crashed. Uh, I'm a yes. So it passed eight voting yes, none voting no, and two voting present. Is there any... Uh, Oh, no, here's one more. The chair will entertain a motion to suspend the rules and place on first reading agenda number 2022-468, ordinance vacating a portion of Dodge Street so between moved. Rutledge Street and First Street in Springfield, Illinois, to Memorial Health System. So moved. Good move. Second. So any, no any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries. Is there any unfinished business Come before the council? Any new business? No. Motion to adjourn. Is there a, yeah. <laughs> Oh, anybody wish to address the council? Motion, there a motion adjourn. for adjournment? So moved. Motion for adjournment. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, say nay. We're adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. Man, I tell you, I oh, to know. Did we someone want to speak? We blame Gary Moser for this meeting. Oh, do you want to speak? reconsider the vote? We got one yeah. gentleman that wanted to Sorry, there's uh, someone that had his hand up. I didn't see. Wish to speak? Yep, come on up. Yep. If you state your name and address for the council, we'd appreciate it. And address? All right. Um, my name is David Alexander. We're still in session. Or let's do it officially. 
Uh, reconvene I'm the city reconvene. council meeting. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. We're reconvening. All right. Um, my name is David Alexander. Uh, my address is 1623 West Capitol Avenue in Springfield, Illinois. Um, uh, I'm here under recommendation. Um, I'm uh, an, ele an electrician apprentice with CWLP. Um, I've been faced with some unfair treatment uh, and concerns that I think the city council needs to be aware of. Uh, so things are, are still progressing right now. Um, I'm really not used to this kind of thing, so I took the liberty to just write uh, what it is I wanted to say, if that's all right with you. That sure. would be a few minutes. All right. Um, this is a plea to allow me to finish my apprenticeship that over the years I have fought to obtain and complete. I have faith the city council will hear my plea and render a fair and unbiased decision in my favor. <clears throat> Here's a little background on who I am, David Alexander. Uh, I'm a person of color who has had to reach beyond my scope and often beyond my means to accomplish my career goals. I believe in hard work, high ethics, in the workplace, honor, and respect. I am thankful for the opportunities I have received from many mentors and professionals in workplace, the IBW, and at CWOP. The road I have traveled has been difficult with many obstacles, but it is making me a better professional and man. I have grown in maturity emotionally and professionally. When I was an eighth grader, I learned about a school that would help prepare me for college. I knew college was good and valuable, so I walked into uh, Sacred Heart Griffin High School um, as an eighth grader to inquire about how I could get accepted into this pre pre prestigious school. <laughs> they let me know that there was a cost associated with attending the school. I knew better than to ask my mom if we could afford it because I knew we couldn't. I asked the person in the main office about payment, a payment plan to help me attend the school. Uh, they sent me somewhere I'd never heard of, the financial aid office, <laughs> um, where um, we, we discussed uh, my interests, like in math and music, et cetera. After realizing I had no interest in sports, they found a way to help me by graciously giving me a scholarship and an opportunity to play in the band. I pressed my way through an environment in which I was not accustomed. I learned a lot, and I'm thankful for all my experiences with SHG. Then in 2016, at 17 years old, I graduated from SHG. Next, I went off to college in pursuit of a purpose. The financial aspect did not pan out in my favor or how I had hoped it would. I decided the best decision was to start working in order to take care of myself and to look out for my family. I was working three jobs at one time for about a year when I learned that there was such thing as trade school. Um, that's when my life changed trajectory. Uh, when I learned about trade school, I knew it was something I wanted to do. I went to, LL, to Lincoln Land Community College <laughs> and got into the highway construction training program. The program taught me some basic skills with tools that up to that point in my life I had never been introduced. Um, I learned about specific trades as well. I learned more uh, as I was, as I learned more, I was drawn to electrical work. I knew I wanted to be an electrician and I could thrive due to my strong math skills and aptitude for the field. However, the apprenticeship at the time only took in applications during a specific time of the year. I applied for a position as an inside wireman or electrician apprentice uh, but I ranked below number 10, un and unfortunately, they only needed 10 people that year. The program I attended uh, with Lincoln Land upon completion granted me an opportunity to obtain my CDL. I drove for about a year. I called Neil Hervey with the IBEW Union uh, asking about when I could apply again to be an electrician apprentice uh, and what things I could do to have a better chance of succeeding. 
I was adamant and insistent with Mr. Hervey because I knew it was my dream to work as an electrician. Finally, he let me know uh, there was a way for me to get in at a level lower than an apprentice. Um, I immediately and very gladly accepted that position. It was lower paid than the truck driving, uh, but I was overjoyed and thankful that that door of opportunity presented me the chance to be in the IBW Local 193. After about nine months as a commercial wireman at step one, I applied for the apprenticeship for the second time. This time was different. I ranked number one. I had been learning more about electrical work with Bone Construction Company, who partnered with Ameren. And I completed that training during my first year as an apprentice with the IBW. After being an inside wireman apprentice for a year, I applied for the apprenticeship with CWLP. In May of 2020, I got hired into the relay department as an electrician apprentice. I was so excited and ready to work and to learn and be the best I could be. And I admit, during this time, unexpected personal situations affected my ability to focus fully on my job. Life happens sometimes, uh, but I, I have matured and, I, and understand no matter what is happening at home, my focus at work is non-negotiable. Last week, I was given an ultimatum to either resign from my position or be terminated. I was told that a decision was required to be made within 16 hours. At that point, I wasn't expecting to be, to be given such a choice, and I knew I needed time to collect myself and my thoughts. Uh, my union fought for me to be given an extension to choose, uh, and that day is today. Um, I still have not given a decision because I'm fighting for my job. Um, I'm asking <laughs> for another chance, the chance to let me finish what I've started. The decision to give up on my training as an apprentice is not something I can agree to. But I'm asking to be given adequate tools and time to be better. It has been noted by my supervisor that the training hasn't been the best due to COVID and not being able to send apprentices to classes where we would receive helpful tools and resources. In more recent times, we have been given some good aid for training. In the past, I have, uh, have, I have had trouble understanding elements of DC theory, uh, which is a class that is required by the apprenticeship. Uh, I was ne never able to take this class while being an apprentice with CWLP because I had taken it before as, a part, as part of my previous apprenticeship. While I went through the class as an inside wireman apprentice, I learned what I needed to learn as it related to the job I did, which was inside wireman work. This job and apprenticeship is entirely more in depth as it pertains to DC theory. I understand I should look at this area of study through the lens of relays and how it relates to my current job. I've taken necessary steps to grow in areas that I have struggled I have uh, taken, upon my, taken it upon myself to buy textbooks and to reach out to the director of a separate training committee to allow me to sit in on classes to, better, to gain a better understanding. I've spent hours of my free time at work and at home specifically to address concerns in my understanding that were job related. Uh, another apprentice that was hired on at the same time as me has recognized uh, deficiencies or weak points uh, in, our, in the training as well. And between the two of us, we have spent over $1,000 to gain relay-specific textbooks to help us grow in our career field. Since we have gained a new apprentice in our department, we have been given some useful resources to aid in our learning of the job in which I have thoroughly, actively, and noticeably engaged. I have been improving as an apprentice and in my job knowledge, and the records show in today's society, there's not much minority representation in, in, in the trades in general, moreover, in the electrical field. It would be advantageous to have at least one person of color in this department, someone who's willing to try, someone who's willing to put in the work, regardless of how difficult it can get, someone who is willing and able to be an employee that is an asset to CWLP. And I am that worker and I'm asking for you to let me finish what I have started. There have been some things I have needed to correct in the past, and I've taken necessary steps, and I have corrected things. 
and I'm asking for sufficient time and an opportunity to get better in other areas. Some of my peers and coworkers who know exactly what our job duties consist of on a daily basis disagree that I should be released from the program. They believe I'm able to do the job and are willing to invest in me. Some people have brought up the question of alternative placement uh, because it was stated to, the, to union represent, representatives that it would be a part of this situation. However, that did not happen. There are other departments in the electrical division that require the same classes that I have been taking. I could potentially transfer into one of those. However, I was placed in the relay department when I was hired. I have spent countless hours and money investing in the education, in my education of the electrical field and what I have to do on the job. I have spent almost three years of my four-year apprenticeship at CWLP. I am, a, I am a dedicated worker and I do not want my labor to be in vain. So as I conclude, I ask once more, please let me finish what I have started respectfully. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for coming up. And just for clarification, uh, the joint um, apprentice, JTC, I don't know what the T and C, they're the ones that uh, made the ultimate decision that gave you the ultimatum. We've had a meeting with regards to that. We're reviewing the entire process with regards to, uh, you know, diversity, uh, what's happened in this situation, uh, you know, and what's been told to me in the meeting is that, well, this has been around for the 70s, I think it goes that far back. And it's about safety and all of that. Well, you know, you can have the best process, but that's what we need to dig to the bottom of is what you're bringing up to make sure that uh, equal treatment was being provided. And uh, that's under review right now as far as that goes. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't make a decision one way or the other. I actually I had the discussion with Corporation Council today to um, I think you're at home with pay right now which isn't good. I'm not happy about it either uh, because why would we pay someone to be at home when you'd rather be learning? Yeah, I'd rather and be so uh, this is the uh, bureaucratic process that we've inherited and we're trying to figure that out. What are steps? And, you know, once you change something, we all know this. Well, you can't do it because of safety. You know, that's going to be thrown up there. So that's what we need to figure out what the uh, right uh, uh, way or path forward is. And, uh, you know, like I said, this is, I think it was established through the Department of Labor and all that. So we're taking a deep dive into the process. And, but in your situation, uh, looking at that specifically as well. Okay. I mean, that's about all I can say. I don't know, Corporate Council, if that covers it? Covered it. Mm -hmm. okay. well, well, thank you so, for your time. But we appreciate you coming up. Thank you very much. Hang in there, room. Any other discussion? Motion for adjournment. So moved. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Aye. Nay. We're adjourned. Thank you.